Episodes. <laughs> what is going on? I never thought we'd get to this point actually when we first started, but damn, we're fifty episodes down, and here we are. It's uh, it's a great feeling. So oh, well done to fast, you guys. Thank yeah, thank you to all you guys who've supported us. In fact, I'm here to celebrate, so I've got hopefully enough to get me through the <laughs> evening. <laughs> I can barely lift today, huh? <laughs> barely lift this fucking thing. Honestly, <laughs> it's good for weightlifting. <laughs> Beautiful. But, uh, well, everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. I think, well, we, we promised we would do something a little bit special for our 50th, and hopefully we're going to deliver, because we put out an invite to pretty much everyone um, who's ever been on this show, and pretty much everyone said, yeah, sure, okay. So, they like us, Drinker. I don't know what's going on. I know, it's a weird thing. I don't know why they like us, to be honest. I don't like us, but you know, it's good that they <laughs> Well, do. after a few drinks, I like us. We're right. <laughs> hmm. It gets easier as time passes. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many people backstage, I guess we should start bringing them in, shall we? Yes. All right. You know this man. He likes to rant about stuff, just like us. Uh, he's got about 500 YouTube channels on the go, so <laughs> he's, a good, he's a busy man. Uh, he is Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. Welcome aboard, man. What's up? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me here. I see the 199s in the chat already going crazy. Represent. So represent. Um, <laughs> and honor to be here. Congratulations on 50 episodes. And uh, I'm drinking water because, uh, uh, you know, that's what I do. But I will fully support Drinker getting drunk as hell. And we support you guys sending drunken super chats in celebration. Um, always something we welcome around here. But thanks for having me, guys. Awesome, man. Thank you for coming on. I like how you introduce him as Guy Rants about things. Like, you have any idea how much that narrows it down? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'm going to do this for everyone. Do it for, for everyone, everybody. yeah. <laughs> Next uh, up, this is a guy who likes to rant about things. <laughs> it's Az from Heel vs. Babies. <laughs> when he said he's a guy who rants a lot, I thought, oh, I'm going in first. Yeah, I, didn't okay. know <laughs> I was like, who's going to be? <laughs> Uh, hi, how you doing? Well, congratulations on 50, 50 episodes. Well done. Yay. Thank you, man. You were, you were one of the, the very first guests that we had on when we just, this wasn't even a fully formed idea originally. We just kind of started doing it. And I think you were one of the first people that we had on. And what a pleasure it was as you've been gracious enough to come on many times over the past 50 episodes. And yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to my boys. Always a pleasure. Oh. Likewise. You'd almost think we knew each other a little bit at this point. You know, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem familiar. Is there another mm. show? Yeah. If we had one more guy here, it would be like the real <laughs> yeah. FNT yeah. bar or something, wouldn't it? Thursday night tights, something like well, that, maybe. So... I'm sure he's not going to turn up. Yeah, there's so, no way he's going to turn up. Nah. Nah. Oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What's up? This, this guy oh, likes to write about things. So. <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> <not around. laughs> Congratulations on your 50th episode. That is adorable. Keep, keep going. Keep going. I'm here for the clout. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Honestly, just like as you know, you were like one of the first guys we had on for this. And, you know. It just it meant a lot for you to give up your time to do this stuff, uh, and you've come on many times since then, and it's always been awesome to have you on, man. Um, and likewise, it's always been awesome to guest on Friday Night Tights and Real BBC. So, you know, it's Cheers. it's a lovely little cycle. You know, it's been great fun. <laughs> Absolutely, a cycle, alt right pipeline, one of those two. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're synonymous, you know. So yeah. Depends who you is talk Steve, to. Yeah, did Steve, is Steve coming on today? Steve Bannon? Is he making it on today, or is that not going to happen? He said he'll drop us an email. We'll right. Okay, yeah, because yeah, he yeah. sends our emails out every day according to Twitter. Uh, that's and our apparently. secret Discord. 
So yeah, I was, yeah. was going to try and get Gavin McGuinness in, but I just don't want to see any more dicks on the screen. <laughs> We've got enough of them already. <laughs> 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 Immediately enough, when Gavos was on, Gavin was on, we didn't see any dicks on screen either. There was an attempt, <laughs> but we didn't actually see it. So, uh, you know, keep trying there, little little buddy. I'm sure you'll get there one day. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've got our next guest. He's going to bring a touch of class and sophistication to proceedings. He is the Little Platoon. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Good evening. (laughs) Sixth wheeling the real FNT here. Happy 50th as well, (laughs) which, if given the size of that bottle, I'm not going to get the chance to say that ever again. So, yeah, happy 50th. I mean, yeah, like, uh, I may not be entirely coherent by the end of the stream, but, you know, no change (laughs) there. So alive. No change. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. 50 years old, drink a damn. I know. Well, the thing is, I put up 50th anniversary initially, and people were like, what the fuck? You're not 50 years old, or, you know, <laughs> you've not been doing this for 50 years? And I, was, I just thought, yeah, clearly my understanding of anniversary is a bit flawed. Uh, Gary went full breeze. Is that a personal attack or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you drink me like, I'm not 50. <laughs> yeah. No, Gary looks younger than me. That's the annoying thing at this point, you know. Um, uh, what was it in Guardians Three? So, you know, people die at fifty, or you know, yeah, yeah. Die at 50. I'm not fifty. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> being born at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was pretty I, good, Drinker. I gotta say, great job. This is why you're crushing it. Uh, having your fiftieth on the day that the Galactic Star Cruiser ah. announces that it's going to close. Great oh, job. Don't, don't great worry, job. we'll get to that one in a moment. Yeah, that's that's interesting. <laughs> I'll bring I'll bring our next couple of guests in so that we got our full bar and then we can we can crack on with this stuff. My God. Uh, but uh, yeah, the next one is uh, I I couldn't have a critical doggo on tonight because mainly there wasn't enough like uh, space on the screen to fit him in. But I did the next best thing. We brought rags. Oh, the epic oh, doggo. oh my God! Oh my goodness! Oh my God! Hello everyone. The light is on you. you gotta do oh. Something. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm here to balance out all of the dignity and decorum Aww. that Little Platoon brings with <laughs> crassness and vulgarity. That's exactly Beautiful. what we need here, to be fair. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, man, no, thank you for coming back for this. Uh, you oh, know, we've you had you a couple of times. We've streamed so many times together on EFAP and doing EFAP movies and stuff. Um, and I'm reliably informed that all those EFAP <laughs> movies will get released at some point. There is a um, rumor going around. Mythical. One day <laughs> they will see the light of day. Yeah. As There's looks a gold mine in the as, Hills. As yeah. looks a little too excited. Looks a yeah. little too excited just, right I'm now. Just, I'm just, just, just petting rags. Just petting yeah. 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 Just oh, stroking rags. Doggo. Hey, yeah. what's a hello? Hello. Look at us go. We're a team. Ooh, oh, that is a nice plushie, there. actually. I'm a little yeah. jealous. I, I want your Molly Poops. <laughs> Uh, and our final guest so far, anyway, because we've got loads more coming later. Uh, you will probably know this man. He also likes to rant about stuff, but in a more dignified <laughs> British way. Oh, he is Sargon. Hey, man. Oh my hey, God. God. It's a long hey, time you don't mind, but I'm uh, I'm still doing some painting from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pass it up. Actually, I very rarely get to sit in front of my desk these days. So uh, I I'll be here. I'll be talking. I'll just be focused. I'll be yeah. here. I'm just painting. <laughs> Every so often, I'll be like, "What?" <laughs> a, a guy. I got uh, some troll on Twitter that earlier was like, I can't believe you still paint miniatures in your 30s. And I was like, thank fuck you think I'm in my 30s. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Troll. You know? oh, You've got to take the wins dude. where you can get them, you know? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I definitely took that win. Yeah, didn't Gary, didn't some shitty hit piece article once describe you as a 30-something? Yeah. And you were like, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> wow. yeah. Oh, congratulations, Gary. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> made my day. <laughs> Someone said, Az has got to be at least 200 pounds. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, man. But yeah, Sargon, awesome to have you on as always, my friends. So um, we've not had you on nearly as much as I would have liked recently, but I know you're a busy man. So thanks for taking That's some time fun. out of painting miniatures to do this. Oh, wait. I'm not taking time out of painting miniatures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I can combine the two, it turns out. Yeah, uh, but anyway, well, we were we were talking about wins there. Um, someone who hasn't won recently has been Disney with uh, the sad. This is sad news. We're starting the open bar. Oh. They have announced the closure of the Galactic Star Cruiser. Now, gentlemen, oh. keep your keep your uh, tears in check for this one. 
I know you were excited about that, but yeah, it turns out that charging people like four thousand dollars a night for uh, six, for a six stay thousand, a, I think. six thousand, yeah. Whoa. In, in basically a shitty cosplay and LARPing experience for the weekend is, is not a winning business strategy and yeah. been forced to close. They are trying to spin it. I got the um the statement up early when I saw it. And it says it was the, it was the most creative project ever. It's been praised by guests and recognized for setting a new bar for innovation and immersive entertainment. The premium boutique experience gave us the opportunity to, uh, opportunity to try new things on a smaller scale, which I assume means bringing in guests. But it's not exactly... um. Yeah, it wasn't the biggest success in the world. I'm yeah. just gutted I never got a chance to see it, personally. But before yeah. we go on, I'm actually not really familiar with this, but I'm going to guess it's a Star Wars-themed hotel. Yes, yeah. yes, <clears throat> yes. And uh, well, it, it was a billion-dollar project. They spent a billion dollars on this project. It was uh, several... I think it was 6000 a night per person. And... Um, it wasn't... It was not It was like an all-inclusive thing where it wasn't just kind of go... like. In theory, you would at Disney they have like thirty something resort hotels, and they're all different themes, and and a lot of them are really cool, and it's just a typical like it's a hotel with a theming experience, and it's part of your vacation, and that's kind of what it should have been. But this was like this all inclusive thing where they've got schedules and cosplays, and it just a Disney vacation is not what it used to be. It, it's a very scheduled oriented thing now, where you have to be certain places all hours of the day. You can't just go enjoy yourself. It feels like you're working. And uh, it, it's backfiring on them massively. Yeah, I yeah, saw a video about the um, like the, the Express Pass. I think Defunct Land did this video on on the Disney like Express Pass, and it really does seem like in order to plan out a decent Disney vacation, it's like a second job to plan everything out, to organize everything, to make you sure need... that all of your passes are in check and your lines are reserved and reservations are made it sounds like a nightmare i'd never hey, you've, got to, you've got to have an app basically on your phone like the disney yeah, app that you yeah. book basically spots on on all the rides um that you then have to be there at a certain time and mm -hmm. it just feels like i don't know if you're a parent with like three kids and like they're all losing their minds and they're bored and stuff and you've got to like haul them from one place to another and you've got to be there at exactly the right time it'd be like a military operation man like you say it'd be more like a job than a vacation yes. mm -hmm. and i i just yeah I, I don't really know what people are supposed to get out of something like that. And then you, you're probably still going to wait in line for an hour just to get on a ride that's over in like two minutes. And then yeah, I mean, I, the I used one. to I used to go to the to the Disney parks a, a lot back before all the wokeness came in. But like we have a theme park channel, Geeks and Gamers, so we do cover theme parks. Uh, I don't go to Disney if it's not for something we're specifically covering anymore because I don't want to go. Um, you go to Universal, you you know, you pay your your ticket and you can have your fast pass and you can kind of just enjoy the day. Whereas Disney, everything has to be done through the app, everything, your meal. The, mm. every ride that you go on every experience it, it's all part of a schedule so you're constantly trying to have to look at your phone to make sure oh i have to be here by three so i can't go here it, it it just i don't know the numbers are still ridiculous through the roof for disney but in terms of the star wars element uh, i told you guys this prior to us going live so uh, i was never a fan of the avatar movie the first one but you go to the land of avatar at, at animal kingdom and it's phenomenal it's beautiful it's an amazing experience and James Cameron was directly involved in that. More than the movie, it sounds like. Oh, it's it's incredible. It really is. And whereas Star why, Wars... Why are you cosplaying Fu Manchu? Huh? <laughs> what, what's have you, have you not Manchu watched makeup? me for like the last fucking month? Nice segue. <laughs> As doesn't watch my videos. Welcome to Friday Night Tights, where As interrupts and oh, destroys a whole... The whole flow is dead it, now. It, 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 it's, it's getting... It's just getting to me, Jeremy. It's just getting okay. to me. Right, you know what? That's it. We're, we're killing the stream. We're killing it. It's over. <laughs> Done with it's this. Over. As doesn't watch my videos, apparently. Um, but yeah, so with uh, Disney I have Star to stream Wars, with you. Why the, the fuck would I watch your videos? Man? I know. I, I'll watch your Brie Larson videos. Um, and Ryan <laughs> watches them too. He's very jealous of the views you're getting. But um, yeah, so the Disney, the, the Star Wars theme park, Galaxy's Edge, has nothing to do with Star Wars. There's no Darth Vader. There's no Luke. There's no Han. There's no Leia. Uh, it's on the outer rim. And it, it, they don't even sell Darth Vader merch in the Star Wars land. So Jeremy, of course, Star Wars is failing. In, in the, the, the Galactic world. Star Cruiser, they have what Gaia is that her name? The singer, what? Twilic? Uh, yeah, who, that who is fighting for Twilic rights. Remember that? Is that yes. like Lizzo? <laughs> she, yeah, she kind of looks like her. I mean, Sargon, just to, to put this into context, because you were asking a bit about this Galactic yeah. Star Cruiser yeah, before. It's not just a Star Wars <laughs> themed hotel. 
it's it's the whole idea i think is that you go and it's like an immersive you're part of a star wars movie experience. it's basically adult dress right. up it's, it's a yeah yeah so like there'll, there'll be cast members going around in character and stuff and it's like oh you got to help us with this rebellion thing you got to be on this deck at this specific time to, to help us do this mission and like you've got to go and do all that shit with them and it just sounds like the cringiest fucking thing ever you know, if this just turns a popular yeah. franchise like, but you know, you, you, could, you could perhaps you could perhaps make it work if there was like if you had Darth Vader striding hey, down the fun. corridors like fucking shit up, or you know you had like someone dressed up as Princess Leia or Luke or like really recognizable characters, and it was like you're on the Death Star or something like that. Star Wars well, fans would go nuts over that, but this is like a generic yeah. starship that could just be from any movie ever. And, and it's but just instead, like... the brain trust got together and said, "How could we make the gayest Star Wars possible?" <laughs> yes, yes, and they yes. pulled it off. They did. Didn't it. they try to write it into law that this yes. is the hol- yes. honeymoon vacation point oh. of Han and Leia? Yes. yes, yes, yes. At Disney World, I can believe they yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> and totally. suddenly, now that's such a money sink right because the way you've been describing it it sounds like they wanted it to be a thing they were like this is a thing look at it it's a thing now we did it and it's like nobody likes you stop (laughs) it sounds like we don't for like jurassic park right because then you have people in dinosaur suits running down halls and chasing kids and the kids would have a great time it'd be fun and then you go and eat in like a replica of the restaurant or something i don't know you know but like for star wars that sounds really gay Yes. It, yes. it sounds like almost unreal, but it's so cheap to get a guy in a Vader suit and then have another person pretending to be hit by the force, right? Who works there, mm, and then right. that'll just you know make kids amazed. Meanwhile, it's like mm. you have Ray, and I think I actually think we're getting to the point where a lot of kids will be like, "Oh, that's uh, that's uh, the one from <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the movies, yeah. That, that's the one whose action figure I didn't buy. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, the, they're like, "Oh, is that Rose?" Quick blaster! <laughs> As you know, the reason Galaxy that Edge, guy. Galaxy's Edge, isn't a real Star Wars land is Kathleen Kennedy. It was her decision. Yeah, yeah, well, decision. yeah. Because she said we we don't want to be mired in the past. We want to look to the future. Yeah, well, and so, the future yeah, is a bleak, so, empty, pointless, em- like wasteland of nothing. So there were there were a lot of uh, there was a lot of decisions in terms of the direction they wanted to take the Star Wars theme parks, and ultimately they brought that whole like where this has to be an extension of the movies type of thing, and and so um, or or it can't interrupt what we have going on, you know all that stuff, and she, her fingerprints are all over the stuff in the parks. It, it really is, and it shows you because it doesn't feel like Star Wars at all. And, and as Young Rip has said a thousand times, just like with Marvel, just like with DC, just like it's Star Wars, it's a layup. It's the easiest thing in the world to get right if you get people involved with the creative process that care about it. It's the easiest thing in the world. And the fact that they've screwed this up so significantly bad. But hey, I guess that Ray movie is looking real good for you now. I'm sure everybody's yeah, going to go see that one. Absolutely. Give us a fucking trilogy idea. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Just, I want to, I want to see more of these forever. Like, I just think poor Daisy Ridley, they must have offered her a hefty paycheck to get involved in this one again. I don't know. I, I think she'll take any first, paycheck at this point. I, yeah, I don't I think say, she was anybody. I don't think she was no nobody one. was knocking on her door. I think they just said, "Hey, it'll give you twenty bucks and you know free airfare and hotel if you'll be in a movie." <laughs> just yeah, nobody like she is. Is That's very cruel. She is. We've even had Star Wars celebration in London, so you don't have to travel far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just what jumped on the bus. Well, what was that shitty movie she was in with Tom Holland's again? Oh, I, I cannot remember fuck. it. Star Wars. I almost said 65 <laughs> for some reason. Six, no, the, uh, the Adam Driver know. one, yeah. <laughs> Star, it's Star Wars meets Jurassic Park. <laughs> Aren't you excited? Uh, yeah. Yeah. She, she had a bit part as a Chaos virtual fitness instructor in a terrible pandemic era film with Pedro Pascal in it, and I can't remember the name of that film. She's in it for about 30 seconds. Which is about time. as much work. That could well be it, yeah. Um, I think that's about as much work as she has had since sort of 2019. Yeah. It's well, not going very well for her. It's a good one. Gundam's in the house. Holy shit. Gundam! I haven't slept man? since yesterday, but I did overhear the insanity of we should have Darth Vader at this Star Wars land. Crazy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I know. Like 6'6. Six, six. You need yeah. an accurate costume. 
you can't get James Earl Jones's voice. So you can't have some dude chasing you around like the force is with me. <laughs> I, I haven't slept since Jones yesterday uh, either. Jones That's how sleeping works. You do it the day before. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be having run around. Sorry, just, just teasing. I got what you mean. You just <laughs> had to chime in with that one, didn't you? <laughs> like, Back to my opinion, man. I I've had to be myself. Darth Vader a number of times for the 501st <laughs> Legion. And since I don't sound like Darth Vader, I was instructed never to speak and to stand on the stilts. It's a fucking nightmare. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the kid be like, hi, Mr. Vader. And you're like, shut up, kid. Yeah, you don't say anything. I don't say a thing. The kids are like, will you sign this? I'm like, oh, my God. But thankfully, you know, I could look through the chin vent of Darth Vader's helmet because I was too short even to look through the eyes. So, like, I'm looking through the chin vent and I'm signing it. And the kid goes, Darth Vader isn't even looking to sign my stuff. And the other kid goes, of course not, you idiot. He knows how to use the force, dumbass. And I was like, oh, man, did I dodge a bullet. Wait, Darth Vader was a villain? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary, you remember my costume David for eight Prowse hours doing the voice. Force, force choking was real. <laughs> Gary, you remember when we went to Galaxy's <laughs> Edge and the thing we noticed was there's no Star Wars music. In the Star no, Wars, there was no Star Wars There's music. No there was Star no people. <laughs> <laughs> there was no people. There was a, 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 a swarm of bees. That was the most exciting thing I saw. Yeah. <laughs> Those were not the bees. bees. Imagine not playing John Williams Star Wars music I know. in the Star no. Wars theme park. It's I mean, wild. imagine not playing it in your Star Wars show, your flagship Star Wars yeah, show. Yeah, that's true. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's almost as bad as thinking, like, imagine if a company bought Star Wars and then had George Lucas' sequel trilogy outline and threw it away. That would never happen, though. No. That would never happen. Imagine no, no, no one would be that stupid. Nobody universe. would be that dumb. I, I just, I, I loved, uh, you know, online recently, there's been, like, the, the name the biggest downgrade uh, meme that's mm. been going around and one guy just put like it was George Lucas and then Kathleen Kennedy <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you, you win the internet so <laughs> like, I'm not going to top that one well I, I, I mean bad news right <laughs> season 4 Mando has been put on hold with the strike so oh, no. No. Oh. wait why would why would a season of the Mandalorian need writers I don't know <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a mystery weird. well what's weird was they had it written before it was going to be produced but uh I'm sure you guys heard SAG voted to strike last night. Yes. Again? Oh, the actors are going oh, too, huh? Somebody else is striking. Oh, yeah, the oh, Screen Actors God. Guild is going to strike. Uh, Nothing will get made. It's just, <laughs> the been, actors guild. It's uh -huh. just what I've been hoping for. It's yeah, finally we'll, happened. We'll, we'll People. Film actors guild is yeah, the yeah. 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 No one to write, no one to act. It's just <laughs> a bunch of cameramen and set designers. Ever, editors need to strike, get them all, and then we'll be fine. Yeah. What, uh, are these, when, uh, what are they? What are they? When the key grip though? guys strike, that's when you're in trouble because those guys the are big. We're waging total war against Hollywood at this point. Like, there's no aspect of Hollywood Mauler doesn't want laid off. I mean, <laughs> it's nothing but cameramen and scenery. Everything that's about it. you. <laughs> Room brunch, tear it up, throw it to the winds. What a value is lost if they all go. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> no, it's, it's the writers yes. fundamentally that are the problem. Wait, though, like. I didn't, don't know. I think Kathleen didn't Kennedy John and the Favreau director write? is the problem, you know? The producer. Didn't like uh, John Favreau and Filoni, didn't they just like pin down a whole season's worth of a script in an yeah, afternoon? Yeah, about actors, right? What do you, oh, just, What's the script? I don't know. Good? Just people. The they people who work in Disneyland the in the suits. <laughs> yeah, bad they have, anyway. <laughs> the, I think Disney needs to understand that they have this massive cast of untapped potential. All the people working in Disneyland and Disney World and all the costumes, like boom, they they, are, they know the characters, they're used to the costumes, they're good at socializing. Just put them in front of cameras. <laughs> it would Say be this, funny is if a, they just this is a career opportunity guy, for you. And he's just in I all mean, the suits, stormtrooper suits, Vader suits, Mandalorian suits. It's just the same guy. So and then they put in AI voices, they film the whole thing. I was I was gonna say we could be at the point like where you just have an AI that generates thing. a script for you. Um, you you have like a CGI deep faked actors that have been put in. Um, Hell yeah! They so just have like a, an AI just run the script through them. already. And I'm not entirely convinced that's not what they're doing already. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I said it before. Like the, you can tell it's not what's already happening because if an AI were doing scripts for Marvel, for example, there wouldn't be as many continuity errors as there are because AI is trained on past material. Oof. AI would do a much Oof. better job. 
Yeah, he would oh, be like, I like how you just low blow. Cause and effect you just, violated, must rewrite. Have you just exposed the problem? It's based on previous works. Of course, there'll be plot holes. <laughs> they'll be like, oh, <laughs> we're supposed to have plot holes. There we I go. should <laughs> focus on Spider Man. He's a beloved character. <laughs> the AI writer for the MCU is going to be like the remote from Click. <laughs> I, I think it, it needs to be, it needs to have like a fail safe built into it as well, where it's like, um, if you encounter like a, an irreconcilable problem, just blame racism. <laughs> White that's, supremacy that's, that's, defenses activation. Yeah. Working well for Cleopatra right now. We oh, know yeah. we're racist. Oof. We know we've race changed everyone. We know you don't like it, but you're still racist anyway. Yeah, yeah, Black Egypt lives racist. matter. Jonathan Egypt Majors has been terminated. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No. Oh yeah, did you, did you hear the Allegedly. recent thing about that? They've uh, they've put out a thing of do not use him in any promotion now and don't mention him for the, the launch of uh, Quantum Mania onto Disney Plus. They've said no. don't put him in anything promotional to do they, with it. They announced uh, Loki season two. I was I was just doing a video oh, on it. And I was going over multiple articles, not a mention of his name. <laughs> oh dear. Like material. Dude, it is uh, creepy how the message hold. has uh, been sent to all of the writers, and they're like, "Yep, no problem, done." Yeah. It's like, Apparently, oh. Kevin Spacey is going to take over as Kang. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a more interesting Kang. What could possibly I, go honestly, wrong? Well, everyone's just talking about like darkest secret, Saint Man. <laughs> <laughs> was that not just a joke? As I assume that wasn't serious. Uh, that was try me. Serious. No, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is evidence of how disconnected yes, Cargon is. Disney yes, Marvel. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's really evidence of like my opinion of Hollywood. Like, you know, I don't know. Kevin Spacey could come back. Who knows? They no, like they, the got, they, they need to replace him with a black actor. So, uh, I think OJ Simpson did. is taking saw, over. Well, well, every, everyone's Roman talking about the high evolutionary Spanish. from from Guardians. Well, well, he was good. He was really good. Yeah. Um, um, and you could you could finagle some dumbass storyline to get him like he's a Kang. He was totally a Kang. Uh, Trust yeah, yeah. Dude, that's all they've been doing. Yeah, it's not it's right. very easy to finagle a dumb storyline. Yeah, it's not like stupid things have happened at MCU. So the black happened. Kang was just an avatar. He was white the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that's how evil he is. Hey, white man controls the black. I ain't, man. Gonna, I ain't gonna lie. When when when, when at the end, <laughs> the Guardians, I was wondering like it's. Is he really a white dude under there the whole, whole time? <laughs> 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 like rip the face. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, this guy. This guy has. There's no like. There's no reason to, you know, sympathize with him. He's a true villain. He's gonna be a white dude. There ain't no way. But Wait, so he, he he are white Johnny Depp. Here. Johnny Depp's underneath. <laughs> ah! He, he yeah. was the comic space. He's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I did find it interesting. A redhead um, too. Recently, uh, like I know at the Cannes Film Festival, like the Brie Larson was questioned about Johnny Depp, um, yes, his movie headline in the the show, um, and I'll give her her credit. I'll give her her dues on this one. Um, she she deflected it pretty well. Uh, I thought I was going to have to be the like, one to defend her on that. I thought she did pretty well getting I, I, out of answering the question. I was yeah. speaking to a friend about this yesterday. I'd love to take credit for this myself, but they said she had to deflect it. Because she's last place in an organization that's dead, that the press are determined to keep active and alive, when she just wants to let it go, because all this, all of her management team, all of her studios have pushed her to be such an unlikable person. She just wants to try and get some sort of hit going, yeah. and the press just want her to come out with her. another Me Too soundbite when it's over. And she's, she just yeah, want to be in yeah. movies and sell out. She, she may guys. have, yeah. she may have learned at this point. An like, oh, I shouldn't be making cringe statements. I should just stop. I should just mm. say, hey, movies are cool, aren't they, guys? Yay, we like just movies. Be a normal. Person. Is there an element as well of like the the tide has turned in favor of Johnny Depp as well? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you could he tell that she had the popular support though, didn't he? She's not going to risk saying anything about him at this point because you know, no who knows? Her, would advise her to standing yeah. ovation. Uh, uh, yeah. Fine. yeah, I think everything changed for her when she liked Ryan from RK Outpost tweet. I think it did too. I think that's where everything I think changed. She's been radicalized. She's 100 <laughs> been radicalized. Did, did, did you guys see, um, and dropping in words. She's she's been out of, out of control lately. So did you guys uh, see Matt Mickelson tweet out uh, him and Johnny Depp together say Grindelwald and Grindelwald. Oh, cool. So yeah, he's really? you know the, things seem chill as fuck now for Johnny and. Uh, who knows? Maybe Good. we'll see another the, pirate. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> he was clearly being fucking done over, man. Hashtag oh, yeah. Johnny and keeps this is, winning. This is the thing. 
Yeah, but even yeah. if he gets rehabilitated now, he's still lost like what three, four years oh, of his shit, career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he yeah, doesn't want yeah. to though. He said he said he's, he's, he's when, yeah. he doesn't need anything from Hollywood anymore. He, well, he, he I know. I'm great. Ultimately, when you said yeah, it, when you he... see Johnny Depp being rehabilitated, I my my brain went what from being a pirate, and then I was like, oh right, right, right. <laughs> he's not, he's not like a method <laughs> actor, you know. But he he basically said that the uh, Hollywood's just running scared. Everyone's so scared to say the wrong thing, and so they're just all sheep now. And they're so so desperate to, to keep their own jobs and save their own skin. He says, "I'll be over here on the other side." Yeah, and yeah I, if I, anyone's concerned, he did a deal with Dior recently for twenty million. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Which I know okay, is pennies yeah. to people like him. I know, but yeah, I'm sure he'll be okay. He's yeah, he moved to England. He paints uh, Warhammer figures now. He's living his best <laughs> life. <laughs> he's, on, he's on a drinker stream, right? Maybe I'll oh, get yeah. him as a guest on the podcast. Yeah, come on, come on, the guest. You know, he's renaming yeah. himself Johnny Adeptes. <laughs> hey! Hey! Pretty Here good. we go. It's, Here's well, let's, let's let's involve Sargon in the conversation, right? All right. So, oh, like, I know Sargon. <laughs> what's your favorite space marine yeah. in the whole wide world? <laughs> I, Sargon, I you like blue and why is it the why is it the blood angels? The green ones. You like I'm terrible one, at Warhammer lore, so basically, if you guys start asking questions, I won't have answers. Well, he, <laughs> he's because uh, you're a student of history as well, given your name. So, uh, oh, yeah. you you've been aware of the the controversy around Cleopatra recently. Was... Yeah, I watched the first episode of the series the other day, and you loved it. Oh my God! Oh, it was fucking brilliant. It was it was just it it felt like some kind of ritual humiliation actually towards the people they were trying to promote. I kind of I was just watching this, thinking, God, I'm so glad this isn't like me being represented on the screen here because I would just be cringing. I'd be like, Oh no! I'd rather you know, be imagine, imagine if they like, like this. <laughs> yeah, well, if they were just like. If there was a fucking activist group that was like, oh, we need to help white people, guys. White people are underrepresented. So we're going to race swap like Tutankhamun or something. You know, and it's suddenly just some dorky white guy. And, and then some scholar come on and go, you know, the first thing my granddad or whatever always told me that Tutankhamun was white. So he's white. And Michael white Sierra and is and like, Tutankhamun. Oh, he's probably fucking Egyptian for the love of God, you know. <laughs> like, I just want him to show a little backbone. I want them to race swap Quasimodo. Forget <laughs> that. I want Shaka Zulu starring Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Like, I just oh, I can't <clears throat> stand it. And it's just this non-stop drip, drip, drip of attacking our culture writ large. You know, it's like everything that could be attacked is attacked. And I'm just like I'm just so done with it, man. I don't care. I'm not doing it. This one has um, sort of I, backfired, though, hasn't it? I mean, th there are some yeah. which are given a pass, well, and like then you get yeah, this one. They, they, didn't, they didn't even really attack our culture with this one. It's Egyptian culture. And so <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've, you've, tread on, you've tread on a minefield with that one, because it's like, well, they're, you can't just claim white supremacy on behalf of the Egyptian people because they're not white. And so, like, yeah, they're, you've, you've uh, met your ultimate enemy now, because if you piss them off, you've got no defense to fall back on. Um, although they did it, try, it, well, we you, you will think the though, country's culture in a documentary. That's exactly what they did. They appropriated its culture, yeah, yeah. and subverted its history for woke American politics. Yeah, and yeah. Then yep. printed it on something, and yeah, even off all know, the mummies. Yeah, come after uh, <laughs> Disney. Have just cancelled another Art. massive billion dollar project. Oh God, no! He what is it? Another one. Uh, Disney have pulled the plug on one billion dollar Orlando complex uh, during oh, yes. war with DeSantos that would have created two thousand workers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is that? Uh, a resort or something? Or a it's hotel. got nothing to yes. do with the fact that they need to cost cut because they're uh, fucking losing money hand over fist or anything. I'd say they've been firing a lot of people. So they've been getting sued by their investors too. Mm. Someone's got delivery Whatever. on. <laughs> <laughs> when, when hearing this news, just imagine Disney as that like grind up, leprosy ridden rat just crawling across the floor with blood everywhere. Just being like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <Love me. laughs> Try to suck the soul out of the nearest child, like for power. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is not sustainable. What they're doing is not sustainable. And, and as I've said many times, like on a, in terms of just sheer numbers, Disney World is one of, is probably their biggest moneymaker, but in terms of sheer numbers, 
there, Disney and Universal, Universal's never going to catch Disney on just numbers alone, but market share. And yeah, Universal's well, you been say that now, but that. Dial of Destiny that, hasn't come out yet. So. <laughs> Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Oh, yeah. did you God. hear that new line? That line yeah. from. I know. I don't, I don't know, know if that's true. true. I don't, I don't know, know, if know if it's true. true. I don't think yeah. it's true, but the fact I, that we I don't know it's true, it's yeah. probably fucking true. Well, well the, the fact I, is I that we don't know, that just shows you how bad true. things are, yeah. that we have to even wonder. Very if it's believable. The thing, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it sounds all. awful, but it's like, I, I genuinely would believe that's a line in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based mm -hmm. on oh, yeah, Lucas Indiana Jones is next on the chopping block of things that they had and that they can still tear down and destroy. Just again. Yeah. They always come back No one likes Indiana Jones, right? I don't know. That screen cap really reassured me. You I'm sure. Come. I'm sure that all of these leaks. This is before Indiana Jones looks to her and says, "Listen up, bitch. Watch the movies." <laughs> I there's. I made it belongs in the museum. A meme. All right. I'm a good person. Oh, the, I stopped the, the Nazis. Now, now get, get, get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich, there. bitch. The chat are asking what the line is. The line is something like <clears throat> Indiana Jones says to Phoebe Waller Bridge, "Hey, I fought against the Nazis," and Phoebe Waller Bridge replies by saying. Well, uh, you also stole from indigenous people. But then he said those indigenous people ate other people, so it made it okay. No, she said it doesn't matter because they're melanated. Oh, whoops. I just never thought I would hear Indiana Jones say, I wish Willy was here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we could only go back to the days of Temple of Doom, man, geez. Right? Uh, a simpler time. Temple of Doom, underrated. A gem. Love that yeah. movie. Well, I'll take any of the original trilogy over pretty much They're anything all that's made nowadays. There's only yeah. three Indiana Jones films. Yeah, after it's yeah. it's a shame they only made three, but you know, no, I, I guess three. it's good that they stopped there so that yeah. we can just share everything. That, like that. that really they knew weird when to quit when they were film they made. Then with uh, they brought back the actors, and uh, yeah, apparently they're doing that again soon. It's just so weird when they do that. You know, I don't know Billy, Billy yeah, Bob and the uh, Glass Skull. Yeah, that one. As, as oh. people have pointed out, like. I would, I would, hundred percent rather see a, a movie if I had to see one now, which I don't. But if I had to, it would be indie and short round, reuniting, yep. mm. going on a great yeah. little adventure. 100%. Yeah, like that could be really fun. That I could think. be super fun, especially now that he's like a kung fu master or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, one. He was, he's having plenty of moments. That. Yeah, <laughs> that would legitimately How old be great. Is Harrison Ford? Two days he belongs in a museum. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's in his eighties, I think. 80s. I mean, he's, he's yeah. pretty spry for an old guy, but mm -hmm. he's how do you figure he breaks a bone in every movie? movie. Um, <laughs> he's um, an archaeologist um, because he just remembers it all. He crashes a plane like <laughs> once a year. <laughs> he's like digging up some ancient burial site. It's like oh, I remember burying that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, doesn't he crash a plane like once a year and just walks uh, out yeah, like, like the golf just, course yeah I, no i think you mean oh, a oh grumpy about it it's like uh oh, you shouldn't have put that golf course in my way <laughs> like in the same way that i don't really want a president that's 80 years old i don't really want to watch an actor that's 80 years old either you know nobody like, wants no. to see indiana fucking jones be like mm -hmm. i can totally get well. like, yeah, well, like, indiana older. jones and the change my yeah. catheter i want to see a indiana Charles jones in the Brian battle with metamucil who isn't doing action sequences? Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. No action sequences. A green screen. Yeah, I just want them sitting around being sagacious and wise yes. and saying things. Commanding that are really and intimidating. In yeah, yeah. Force yeah. Of personality, yeah. you know. But you know what's going to make it better is being led around by an insufferable feminist. I think. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that makes everything better, Gary. Could we have some 20 something absolute bitch, please? Just the yes. bitch well, the better. Coming it's right up because we got Phoebe Waller Bridge. bridge. They have like a What's vending that? machine. What's that? Harrison Ford just shot himself. Of them. That just happened. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Changed his diaper. Oh. <laughs> so what? What are the odds on him putting the hat on here by the time the film ends? Uh, I'm. I'm well, no, 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 no. Mauler, you've, you've got it all film. wrong. He will not be allowed it. to put the hat on her because that the would give him too symbol. much agency. She has to take the hat. Take from it. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I disagree. I, I disagree. Good. I think his, hat, his hat blows off and he goes to pick it up and she grabs it. No, no, he, back, well, he goes, he goes to pick up. it up, but his back goes and he's like, yeah. ah. <laughs> 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 She's just like, yeah, it's mine now. Indiana Jones and his Zimmer You don't deserve to wear that hat. Hmm. Oh, that's it's a good as well. Why is he wearing the same fucking clothes? 
Like, is there any, you know how like old people people are? They like what they like. They old like, people the, like the way that they like them, and you know, as just an old people, thing. I do agree. But like forty <laughs> years later, you just out of necessity they have to buy a new fit, set of clothes. Damn it! Well, it would be like they, yeah. they wear it'd be like through. It, It'd be like in well, Last Action Hero when he opens his closet and it's just all the same clothes, like a whole <laughs> oh, yeah. rack of like the same jacket. Yeah, those clothes don't wear out on a green shirt. screen, baby. I've got you can wear old this shirt that I wear. Yeah, I, per I personally all think wearing time. the same thing every time, every day yeah. is cringe. Uh, I never do that in my <laughs> videos. Uh, you hit this, folks. Jeremy thinks very cringe. I'm very much about <laughs> diversity of clothing on your YouTube videos. So uh, I take you know, the opposite so approach. I, I don't wear clothes. I only accessorize. <laughs> keeps things simple. <laughs> it is an age thing as well. Like my yeah, nan is yeah, roughly the same age drink. as Indiana Jones. If the carers didn't take her clothes off her, she would never get out of them. So <laughs> it's probably a <laughs> That's the case for Indiana. He's just like I can't you think at the end of the movie it'd be quite He's just out there though. on ropes around his arms and his <laughs> legs, being marionetted on a green screen. <laughs> that, that really is the problem though. My nan is roughly the same age Indy. as Indiana Jones. Okay, not an action film. Just not. <laughs> not <laughs> on an action film. Beatrice Jones. Well, he's, he's good in 1923. Harrison I just think Patrick, Patrick Stewart well, and, and Harrison Ford are good. nearly the same age. Like yeah, the year and in 1923, 1923 he good. when he was a spry young 26-year-old, he was a good actor. <laughs> Well, yeah, like what was the movie with Denzel, uh, the the Bone Collector, where he was bedridden yeah. the whole time? Yeah. Like that, oh, yeah, that would yeah. be good. Yeah, that would be good for Harrison yeah. Ford his age to pull a roll like that off, and not jumping <laughs> off of cars and hanging off cliffs. Noticeably being a blurry faced <laughs> man as he does sounds it. Sounds like a yeah. big film. Just comes into a room, sits down, now delivers <laughs> lines. Maybe he's We're still with his hat on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, but, but yeah, they, they, um, they it really based because you could have Phoebe Waller Bridge at the end be play, you know, play this snooty cow. She goes to the African continent, and goes, Here, I've returned all your antiquities that were stolen from you. And they go, Thank you, thank you. And she goes away, and they go, Right, sell them to the private collector, right? <laughs> I, I think which, the reality would be like reality. I think more it would be like she tries to return it and they just fucking massacre her and eat her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did, you know, she should actually maybe go and experience what happened in Temple of Doom. See yeah, there's a big dinner so scene hot, and they know? open up her hell, their her head. <laughs> mm, woman brains. They'd be like, "There's nothing in here." What's that? <laughs> yeah. Bring, no the brain Bring back the monkey. I got really confused. <laughs> <laughs> the brains have rotted away with feminism. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this stream will help your reputation. I can taste the male gaze. <laughs> it's like tears. Well, speaking speaking of which, uh, some of you guys here play video games. I'm reliably informed. Speaking of male gaze, yeah. yeah well, <laughs> only o only Gary, only Gary. Gary is the Gary is the the most the knowledgeable gamer. and respectable gamer. Well, as I learned from you, Jeremy, real men play video games. And Damn so... right. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Matt Walsh uh, on that one. <laughs> so, uh... However, however, Dove Soap. Dove oh. Soap of the Tears oh, that no. uh, oh, no. us guys cannot, uh, cannot enjoy video games the way we used to because they are exploitative. Now, they produced a lovely little animation for us. Should we take a quick look oh, at sure. some of it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, is, yeah. this is glorious. Yeah. This is glorious. Yeah. I might need to pause it at times just so I don't get completely demonetized, but let's try it. All right. Drinker, is it wise to do this? Oh my god! Yay! Yeah. Hey! Yeah, got him. Yay! Look at him for All right. I'm glad they're friends. Yeah. Uh, it's, you they're know, it's serious because there's mournful piano music. Yes. <laughs> All right, time to let the I gut the hang chin out. Strap. I like it's hiding her double chin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, she's very fit. What are you talking about? Oh, oh wait. Shit. Um, oh, my God. Oh, oh, right. Whoa. <laughs> Better get that makeup off quick, darling. Finally, you don't want to make yourself look remotely attractive. No. I'm going to, like, if I have to see this, then you guys have to see it as well. We're going to leave it here for a moment. Wait, wait, hold on. This this isn't like, if they portrayed her as like a brawler wrestler type, I mean, she's a, she'd be attractive in that role. 
They, I don't know why they had to do this. This seems really uh, oddly they had misguided. To they have to victimize everything. They have to victimize everything. Mm. Well, I saw a great response to this, and it was like a little uh, cartoon of like Lara Croft in these sort of dimensions, <laughs> yeah. and she's trying to heave herself up over like a cliff top. <laughs> yeah, that, that and was, so uh, she uh, can't get up, and yeah. she just falls and makes splats on yeah. the rocks. Prime, eighty-five. Wait, yeah. wait a second! Wait a second! How come they didn't get her to play She-Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Right. Some of the commentary I saw, which I thought was really she fascinating, bulk. especially with this being like a we shouldn't Dang. sexualize women thing. It's like, why did you take more clothes off her in the game she had more on? Like, yep. yes, I'm confused now. Well, so they, they, they can be sexualized as long as they're <clears throat> as long as they are uh, body positive at the same but, time. Well, isn't so. this a backfire? They're basically saying like, yeah, that's hot in the game. This isn't, but it should be. <laughs> It's like pretty much. Wait, well, yeah. just, when I well, try to put myself into their minds and how they work, like I just draw a blank. I, I don't yeah, had an aneurysm and fell on the floor. It's hot phobia. Yeah. It's hot phobia. Well, um, That's what it is. If you look on, if you look on the the desk there, you can see the photograph showing that the only creature larger than her is an alien monster from another world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And he's willing I'm, to be a friend. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that they're having a budding friendship. <laughs> Why are they so xenophobic? Yeah, that's a good let's question. See, let's see that, that this is going to give us our answers. Why do you keep looking at herself in the mirror? Uh, my okay, shift at the Cinnabon starts I, I in 20 minutes. <laughs> I was going to say, this this is the future of Lara Croft, by the way. She is going to end up looking like yep. this. Mm -hmm. She's just looking at herself being larger? She genuinely oh my god, it's she's like, oh, wait, Fiona, so, we get some well, numbers. What we're saying here is like fat people can kick ass too. Yeah. I already knew that. Okay. Well, yeah. you, you we we saw that. Wings oh, versus fat. Boogie. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, no. What do you mean Wings kicked ass too? Wings fucking destroyed him, man. <laughs> he was great. Hey, we're wings, can, get very wings can fine. mildly touch people in the face for 90 seconds. So <laughs> yeah. you, you better watch out. Very scientific man. numbers here in just a moment. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we science. go. Ooh. All the science plus the science. Mm, trust is not made up numbers. Oh, do right. they? What, what's wait, wait, the, wait, wait. Sorry, does, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Does that statistic imply that 74% of women are like fat and large and no help? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I think. Just, I, I think, yes, Dove just called 74% of women fat. Yeah. Oh, sorry, before yeah. we go any further, hold up, hold up. Wait, we can we just address the elephant in the room? Uh, not like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, let's address the whale. Just, let's address the whale in the room. This is this is Dove, the soap brand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They if know they're fat people, any, I guess. If ever there was any product that was just the, what's the opposite of synonymous? Antimonous <laughs> to yeah. gaming? Antithesis. Antithetical? <laughs> But what, what is what is Dove Soap doing Dove, here? Talking well, about, it, it's explained in a second because they, they've partnered yeah. with women in video games. I think. Uh, Dove just said, <laughs> women what? don't play video, video games. games. Dove just said three quarters of the female population on Earth look fat <laughs> in their jeans. Okay, <laughs> this is like Geico car insurance being like, yeah, female representation in video games needs to change, guys. I'm like, shut up. Female lizard. representation in garages. We, the, the, well, the, do, the, you the, not, the do you not understand? Silence, reptile. Do you not see the yeah. correlation here, though, Rags? Because, like, they're selling soap that you use to wash your body. Now, the more of your body that there is, the more quickly you'll go. Oh, the more soap, dirt right? you so, accumulate, yeah. the, the more, more soap you use, the more soap you need to buy. It's brilliant. <laughs> yes. The more yeah. you sweat when you're fat. Um, so, like, it's it's a win-win scenario over, for that. I think, I'm pretty sure it was Dove in 2017 got in trouble because it put on a soap advert somewhere in Asia which showed a black woman washing with Dove soap and as a result yeah. became white because she was clean again. <laughs> oh, I'm not going oh, oh, to be taking oh, lessons no, no. on social justice no, from it, this soap company. Yeah, it was, the Japanese... The Japanese um, no, that's yeah. Chinese. Yes. Was, it was, it was the, the laundry yeah, the commercial. Asian, the, the Asian laundry commercial. Was it was Chinese. black. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I remember that. It right. was the laundry soap, laundry detergent, I think. Yes, he goes yes. Back, he gets spun around and spit out as a white Oh, no. You know for a fact, though, the people behind this ad if you were like okay, gentrification name three video games they'd be like mario mario <laughs> Zelda. mario 2 and mario 3 <laughs> Zelda, he's a hero right we well, like him okay. mario oh. breath of the wild <laughs> mario breath of the wild witcher <laughs> it, it was like that breath it was the wild three zelda tears of the soap in your eye i don't know <laughs> The real funny part is the parent company that owns Nintendo? Dub also owns Ben and Jerry's. 
Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, not surprised. Those insufferable twat. <laughs> yeah. let, let me see. Let me see if I can get to the end of this. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, they does it. Who gives a fuck what you feel? It doesn't Party mean it's Unreal true. Engine. Unreal Engine. Engine. Games. Did, uh. Like women in games, all of them in capital. Yeah, all six of them. Slay like queen. queen. <laughs> what if the monster? Uh, it's what if what? <laughs> what if the monster who was her friend never saw her without all of like the skinny get up, and he's like, "What? Oh my god! What the fuck happened? Are you okay? Jesus! Or, <laughs> what, did you did you consume her? What Where did is you she? eat? <laughs> like, you know, before I stop, he's like, "Can we just can we have a sit down?" She's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "So." I feel like we need to talk. Uh. <laughs> before, before I say anything, I want you to know that this is coming from a place of love and concern. Yes, I, we are friends. We will we always friends. be friends. I want you to be uh, my friend for many, many years to come. So, but there are no obese old people. I'm going to be taking back my golden corral. What do you mean? Joe Jarama is still kicking? <laughs> Have you checked? Oh, man. Yeah, I, it's it's an interesting, you know, but it's an interesting um, piece of human psychology here, right? Because um, I don't know about you guys uh, and Gary, because you're a hardcore gamer yourself. Yeah. Um, but when I play as a Gary. character, like, I don't want them to look like me. I don't want them to be no. me. I no. want them to be no. their character. I'm yes. just playing yes. as them. And so yes. I don't want Kratos to, to look like me. No. I don't need him to. He's his own character. And so where is this, this... Otherwise, what's the point? I gave up on player representation ever since Jet Force Gemini, so that's just not happening. Oh yeah, so there's the memes going around about like all these uh, shows, all these social justice women seeing like the Little Mermaid. They're like, I now feel represented, and it shows like this man, and he sees this massively overly jacked, you know, video game character that he, no human could ever like. This I should probably work out and buy yeah. a sword. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just. This, Look, I want to look at video game characters the same way that Hispanics look at Goku. All right. Well, they, they, well, they, they, have, that, they have that meme of the, the women. They say, I want those characters to look like me. And the male characters are like, I want to look like them. Well, the, the, yeah, the, I was. this is what I was going to say. There, there's an interesting like theory about this that, um, you know, when, when boys, for example, play with like toys like Batman, they, they become Batman. They imagine themselves mm. being Batman and like fighting the Joker and all that stuff. When little girls play with Batman, they turn Batman into them. I have and to so change they, they, him. Change yeah, him. They, they have that when character they say I just can do the him. things that they, they want to do. But yes. it, it's an interesting, like, I don't know if it's how true it is and how many people it applies to, but if it is true, um, it explains a lot of stuff because it's like they, they don't want to become that character. They want to uh, project themselves onto it. Um, and yeah. they they want to make it just become them. You could say like, well, that that points to a lack of imagination, or like it that they they just want to relate everything to themselves. I don't know what the psychology is behind it, but it kind of explains nice. why so many fantasy shows held by women are fucking shit. <laughs> like, wow. yeah, they don't have any imagination. Well, to, I'll like... put it in a way that'll get us demonetized. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I love guy. women. You're, You're always trying to better yourself. <laughs> but with That's women in today's say. modern society, they're already perfect the way they are. And that's why Ray is amazing, you filthy bigots. I mean, yeah, we saw it with uh, with Ray. We saw it with Captain Marvel. We saw Galadriel. I mean, all oh, yeah. of these, these characters, they, yep. they were right all along. Uh, oh, just like Agatha. They're they're really, they're isn't that really interesting, though? Because it's like, I, if it, like, I guess from their point of view, I wouldn't want to be criticized. I wouldn't want to make mistakes. I wouldn't want to be flawed and have to struggle and go through all kinds of horrible things. Uh, and so I can't project that into a character that's not me. Like this character has to be like me. It has to, or it has to be like my idealized version of myself. It has to be super intelligent. It has to be like super competent. Uh, always be right about everything. Uh, never show weakness because I don't want to show weakness in front of people. And so that's why you perhaps you end up with characters like Galadriel or Rey or Captain Marvel, whoever you want to pick from like the lineup of today's uh, cardboard cutouts. You know, is that the reason? I'm not sure, but like it's an interesting thing to ponder, I suppose, if that's the theory behind it. Answer me this. If so many, apparently 74% of chunguses out there feel underrepresented <laughs> how can they how do you explain katamari that's been here for ages 
That's actually a deep cut. Who here even knows what I'm talking about? The chat. Mahler, I just made a Jeff Force Gemini reference. All right, we're we, <laughs> we've got people here who are around. For we're that. the deep cut people. We're the chat deep will cut like people. that one. None of you guys will get it. Okay. Well, they Katamari, certainly that can't thing, like that giant ball that rolls around and it just like like adheres everything to it. Pretty much. <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember that. It's a giant ball that only gets bigger. You know. I mean, rep <laughs> the, the representation thing is it's a bullshit argument. It's a bullshit statement. No, no. Generally speaking, nobody gives a damn about that. We just saw Mario Brothers about a, a short, fat Italian plumber. Uh, no one went because they felt represented. Generally speaking, As a they short, went fat because Italian they. Plumber, <laughs> I felt represented. I've identified <laughs> with Yoshi for years now. So. <laughs> And it's just uh, you, you make relatable characters in in terms of their attributes, not their visual look. You know, uh, I, I I've never cared to make a character that looked like me or represented me in a in a creative class video game. I just want to make oh, a cool every looking game. character. Short, dumpy, bearded. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, you know, it, it's Dwarf no it's easy matter. fucking math. Yeah, like, what exactly. what is the m biggest thing people connect with with the Mario movie? Is probably going to be brotherly love or the family yeah. familial connection. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Most people will be able to relate to that in some way, and that's it. Nobody's going like that. Mustache is just the way I do mine. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, yes. That is, it's so ridiculous, and uh, you know, that's somebody in the chat just said. I mean, Zelda just sold ten million copies in three days. It's not because everybody was running out there because they look like Link. Uh, it's because it's a great game that offers a, you know great experience. Seventy-four percent so. of men do not look like Link. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. totally. Honestly, you, hit, <laughs> you see, they're trying to they're trying to turn the, the freaks are trying to turn uh, Link Link into not, a non-binary. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought Link was a girl. <laughs> Meg Ryan. <laughs> 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 well, of course. Well, that's correct, Carl. Because as we all know, the yeah. best women are men. But to be, to be honest with you, <laughs> I never actually true. had a Nez. So, like, it, you know, it's only through cultural diffusion that I know that Zelda isn't the hero of the story, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like no. Metroid. Can I? Can but, I yeah. Can who I, do you like more, Zelda or Metroid? Um, I your heroine. Like either of them. Really? <laughs> can I? Wow. Can I give a, a, a hot her. take though on the Mario movie? You think she's oh, cooler than Halo? I thought it was shit. Mm -hmm. Oh Ooh. no! Oh, oh. I know, I know. I I took. My I kids wanted to see that it. stereotypical Italian accent too. I hear you. Uh, not <laughs> even that though. But like, I just fucking hated it. <laughs> I was watching, it thinking I actually enjoyed the one from the nineties because it was like, crazy, oh, you know? <laughs> oh right? wow. See you guys, that is a hot take, sir. I know, I know, right? A bit of, you know, Targo's uh, trying to get John Leguizamo to stop. Paint your little stuff. action figures and... <laughs> well, listen, what I'm saying <laughs> is... <laughs> when, when I'm watching the Bob Hoskins one, I didn't have to be exposed to Seth Rogen, right? So that was a massive point in its own favor. Yeah. But also, like, it just felt... I don't know, the, the fucking Mario movie just felt really discombobulated. And like, the thing is, I don't envy whoever's got to actually make it, like law accurate mario movie because i mean like good fucking luck right right you know, how do you make this right. look like real life yeah but, you like, do mushrooms you claw through pipes life. i yeah. hear you <laughs> but, but the thing is that i had to take my kids to see the sonic movie as well right and the sonic movie was actually fun and mm. actually you know entertaining to watch i hate to agree with him but he's right i just was bored man it was I mean, like, my well, kids were getting bored well the question is is do, have you played the mario games well yeah Okay, like okay, how wait, have have you, okay let's okay, let's clarify. Years. Yeah. Like have you played <laughs> was it on at least the Game Boy? Oh, who was president when you were playing Mario? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you complete the Mario game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've played plenty of Mario games before, right? But like and I'm not saying like there weren't references. Ooh, I recognize that thing. But that's not really good enough, is it? You know, like just having the thing there. Like like I said with the Sonic movie, it was actually entertaining. And, you know, there was nothing... I mean, maybe it's because it was Jim Carrey and Jim Carrey's funny or something. I don't know. But, like, I don't know, man. The Mario movie I <laughs> was not entertained by it at I, all. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone would accuse the Mario movie of being, like, high art or no, anything. I like, didn't no, say... I, it, yeah. No, no, it, I, did, I didn't say it had to be high art. Yeah, it's not I just said it had to no, be no. fucking entertaining. But, you know? like, yeah, if I was well, to compare it to some, like, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, it's like, okay, it's definitely not on that level. But uh, I, I, it just felt like a, a simple feel-good... Uh, family movie that doesn't sure. have anything particularly controversial in it, and it's just a bit of fun, you know. Well, like, it's the, the, it... the last wish high up on the scale. You put Velma right at the bottom. I think it sits pretty relatively in the middle. It's not like amazing, but it's also not the worst thing ever. You know, yeah, that's the con right. Context obviously matters. So, like, 
you know, Mario is one of the most iconic characters in, in, in of our lifetimes and one of the most recognizable, you know, characters. Um, Nintendo has one of the most passionate, strong fan bases. And what do we as fans always say? Make movies for fans, not the normies, not the general yeah. audience. Take care of the fans. If you take care of the fans, then everything will take care of itself. That's the biggest problem with Star Wars. That's the biggest problem with Marvel right now. Um, so Nintendo took care of the fans. They made a film that fans would connect with. And more normies connected with it than I thought because I said when I went into the movie, I was thinking, man, this could be one of the greatest animated films ever. It's not. It's not like objectively, it's not one of the greatest animated films ever. But it did what it needed to do with the brand of Mario. If Mario was a nobody character, no one understood this character, the world, none of that was recognizable and that movie comes out, it's going to be a massive flop. No one's going to connect with that. But the context of the 40 years of fandom and video games and references and connecting to that, that's why it, it connected so well with so many. It is, yeah, but that explains popularity and not quality. So, like, I'm yeah. sort of, I was sitting in the middle of that. I don't think it was the worst film ever made or the worst animated product of the last six months, even. I also don't think it was particularly good. I would slightly push back on the suggestion that in order to please fans, all you need to do is put recognisable things on the screen. I think some fans, at least, would demand that you try and tell a story with the things you're putting on the screen. And I would have preferred yeah. it had the Mario film tried to do that. Um, I, I can see why it was popular, not only for the reasons you've listed, but also because it is one of the first films in, in recent times that was clearly marketed largely for children, which parents could reasonably trust was not going to do mean things to their children. So right. you, you can just rely on the Mario film to take care of your kids for you for the next sort of 90 minutes, two hours, whatever it is. Um, and you don't have to worry too much about it spreading messages you don't like. You don't have to worry about it being overly politicized um, right. or, or espousing Except causes that you don't agree with. Monarchy, but... Yeah, yeah. Under a woman, for... there's, there's nothing wrong with the monarchy, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think like moving forward, uh, uh, this is a this is a film that did exactly what it needed to do to begin what journey they're going to take us on in this universe. But they need more substance moving forward. You yeah. can't just mm -hmm. rely on oh, there's the moment from Super Mario 3D World. Oh, he ran like that. Oh, there's the music I remember from Galaxy. Y you you can't just be resting on that moving yeah. forward. But for this one film, I think it worked. If the next one is just another nostalgia, you know, bait movie. That's going to run really that's going to run out really quickly, even if you're taking care of the fans. So now you've got to actually add substance to it, which I think they will. But 100 percent, you can't just continue these films with well, with the level of storytelling. Like the way, Mando, the way I'm uh, judging it, right, is on my, my son's reaction, actually, um, because like this, you know, he's he's a you know, we watched the Sonic movie when he was like six or something. And uh, his his reaction to it is how I judge whether it did the job that I would have thought a kids' film was supposed to do. Because when we, we we came out of the Sonic film, he was just like you know oh, I've got to run fast, and he was running around like Sonic, right? But when we came out of the Mario film, he was like, "What are we doing now, Dad?" And I was like, uh, "I guess we're oh, going to do some shrooms and cross the pipes, little dude." He fucking adored <laughs> Mario. <laughs> well, like, he, he wasn't in any way interested, or he didn't remember anything from the film, or any, and he didn't care about it. And it was like, right, okay, that film made no impression. So, like, it's only relevant to people who are deeply invested in the sort of nostalgia of Mario, right? To those people who aren't, well, like me, actually. I mean, I enjoyed Mario games, but I'm not like a fan or anything. But, you know, it was just like, okay, this is just kind of boring and wasn't very good, you know? I don't buy it. I reckon controversial. Would go nuts for Mario just like Sonic. I, 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 Absolutely. Like, I, there's, there's not even a question. Whether or not, like, he's saying, I'm going to jump like Mario. It's like, there's going to yeah. be kids who are. There, there, there probably them. are, but, like, my son has never you played Mario. Wait, Wilson, are you questioning right? Sargon's sample size of one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my, my son's never played Mario or Sonic, right? So the the film has to sell itself on its he own. He only merits. plays Warhammer. <laughs> he <laughs> plays Space Marine House all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... I mean, I think like when I I I haven't seen um, a movie, so I've seen it multiple times in cinemas and. I mean, people are dressed up. There's enthusiasm. You yeah, know, there's yeah. excitement. Uh, we recently sure. went to Super Nintendo World uh, in Universal Studios and uh, I'm sorry, in Hollywood. And the 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 passion for Mario just seems to be at an all time high. So I don't know. I mean, I'm at a point in time where I look like the the 
right now we're at a time where so much is being dictated by a, a group of, of executives that know nothing about this stuff and they're trying to market to there's a, they're they're obsessed with marketing to people that don't have any interest in the product and that's a, always a mistake and the numbers have shown that the Mario movie it took care of its its hardcore audience which is a bigger audience than most and it did reach beyond to the normie crowd far more than I thought it would. And my first you know, reaction to it, I said, if you don't know Mario, you're not going to know shit about this movie or care because it's not it's not made for you to quote pre Larson. It, it's not made for you. I think it's and, very approachable. I think the movie yeah. was even for normies who aren't big in Mario. It was yeah. yeah, it had a very simple story, very nice little, you know, a little bit of thematics and premise, really simple to follow. And I'm, I think I, I was legitimately impressed with how many references and specific callbacks to the games they had. I, I think I, it, sh I, it shows a legitimate kind of care and concern for the franchise. To, that we I, it's, 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 hard, to it's hard for me because, like, obviously I haven't played the games. I know most of the references that they're going for, and I know the general setup of Mario's world. Uh, so it, it's... It would be interesting for me to just experience that as someone who's never played any of them and doesn't know any of the lore or anything like that. Like, how do you perceive all these, like, you know, these yeah. blocks that you have to hit from beneath to, like, get some power up or whatever? Like, uh, does that make any sense to you or does it just seem like some contrived bullshit that's been thrown into the movie? You oh, know, it is. Like, there's a lot of contrived bullshit. Oh, know? yeah. I don't see how you yeah. make a cohesive, like, piece of lore about the Mario world. But well, clearly they it... did it in 1993, Rex. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't speak to its cohesiveness, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was See, full of stuff from the games. It was full of, uh, I, I the, the humor worked pretty well for me. I was really enjoying my time. Uh, I think it was really well paced. I appreciate that a lot of the humor was subtle uh, and wasn't always paid attention to. I think the music was really well done, apart from the contemporary music from our world that they shoved in. Um, as far as a first attempt goes, I'm left more optimistic than not. It's no great cinema. It, it wasn't like a good story or anything, but you know, it had, it had its moments. It had some through lines there. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested to see what they do next with it. Uh, and the, just, the, just, the composer did a really good job. He commented on my review, shockingly enough. Oh, so he's been nice. canceled nice. yet? Put it on um, your wall, like so, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, No, that was I, I wanted to like highlight it when it happened. I was like. You know, I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make a point of this because I don't want everybody to go. You're part of the alt right. Don't ever comment here again. Oh so. right, yeah. <laughs> well, since you two well, are basically best there. friends now, tell him that he did a good job oh. for the movie. Well, just you know, I'm, I'm sure if he comes on a stream, the first thing he'll say is we're not affiliated with Geeks and Gamers. I'm sure that's yeah. what he'll say. Um, we've been there, done that a few times. <laughs> Geeks and Gamers um, had their chance. <laughs> just before we move on, like I know that there's a few people like trying to get in now to the backstage and stuff. Um, I know right. that, like a lot of you guys have been on for for over an hour now um so i would say like if there's anybody that's like running out of just time say go or, away like, now drinker just say go yeah, away like, now. Yeah, i have to start pointing at people <laughs> and it's like <laughs> you 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 <laughs> like, i gotta go god damn it <laughs> don't worry i'll let someone come in i'll sleep on the floor <laughs> yeah no, I, I'll, I'll i'll uh i'll bounce right now but thanks for having me on uh congrats and uh you know appreciate you guys and i'm always here if you ever want to bring me on to talk about mario uh, I'm always here, so good yeah. to be with everybody. <laughs> awesome, I'm always uh, here if you always talk about Mario. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, good night, everybody, uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Jeremy. I'll, uh, Bye. I'll head off as yeah. well because I'm the person with the least relevant knowledge on this subject. So uh, thanks <laughs> okay. for having me. Congratulations thank for 50 episodes, man. That's really good. 50? Uh, oh, thank you, buddy. 100. No. <laughs> <laughs> you Give us another year. We'll be there. We'll get there. <laughs> I got the numbers wrong. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank, you. Goodbye. thank right. you as well. Thanks, Congrats on 50. Chat, love you as always. All right, Ooh, thank you, guys. Appreciate you coming on, mate. It's always fun to be invited places and say controversial things. I'll save my rant for the genocide of the New York accent in superhero movies. Spider-Man <laughs> doesn't have a New York accent. Captain America, nope. Daredevil. Nope. What the hell's going on, Marvel? Yeah, Captain America didn't say the N word one time. Not once. I'm shocked by that. In I the really 1940s am. of all times, too. <laughs> well, oh, I'm going to bring well, some. Oh, sorry. Good night, sorry, everybody. Gundam. I'm sorry. Bye. Bye. I will Bye. take Bye. my Bye. time and my leave. Adios. Thank Bye. you, man. Appreciate it. Should I go too? Shall I go? Hey, 
it's entirely up to you guys. Uh, we've we freed up some space here, so like you can just, stay as long as you're comfortable. All right, just tell me what to fucking do. All right, <laughs> fuck off. Because I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, I'm going to bring in some more people then. So, we're going to feminize things a little bit. First of oh, all, we've got a person here. To the left. who likes to rant about things, Whoa. strangely. <laughs> we've got that Star Wars girl. Link. Hi! Yeah. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hello, hello. How are you today? I'm super, super sleepy, but I got caffeine, so oh, God, I'll be awake like for this. Wait, 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 that wait, looks what, like what, blood. What? That does not look caffeinated. What's caffeinated? So about I that? don't drink drinking. coffee. I don't like coffee. The smell of coffee, it's like an instant headache. So this is like just pure caffeine from Starbucks. Pure caffeine. Yeah. Pure, pure caffeine. caffeine and sugar. Right? Yeah. I'm and sure there's sugar in it. So I don't like coffee or tea, but this is a refresher. Oh so God, it tastes like strawberries and I get it with no ice and no water. And so it's just a pure drink. Nobody else can stand it but me, but I love it. So. Very nice. I got Maybe my own pick me up here, so I'm good. Should be asked if if that Star Wars guy is one of the seventy three percent of gamers who doesn't feel represented by video games. Not yes. anymore. I'm not morbidly obese <laughs> or black, so. <laughs> Damn it. I know. I know. It, but this I, is the, yeah. no. I'm when sorry, I this play is... video games, I like playing as male characters, typically. Is but, that sexism? I have to check. Well, no, because it's now internalized misogyny. Clearly, oh, that's the one. That's it. <laughs> well, no, the, this is totally the most, I guess, feminine thing you can say about it. The guys have cooler outfits, especially now, and so you just look badass. Whereas now, it's like I played Elden Ring as a female, and I'm like, this is the ugliest bitch ever. And so I ended up just having her not wear clothes because they just have like the bandages, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she actually kind of has a waist. So I put on this like fluffier skirt on her which is still a boy's skirt, but I'm like, all right, at least she kind of looks like a chick because now all of the chicks just look like men. So it's like, I might as well just play as a man and just be this badass dude. But Good, right. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going Drink to bring this. in the next guest as well, just as, as we're going into this. Uh, we've also got joining us baggage claim. Hello. Hello. A lady who rants about things. <laughs> yeah, Music. exactly. She's oh, not she's muted. You're muted. Muted. Oh, you're muted, muted. baggage claim. <laughs> You're muted. You just said the funniest us? thing you've ever said on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, you go. there we go. There it we was go. the funniest thing, and now it's lost forever, unfortunately. <laughs> <Damn> but, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on 50. Mahler, critical drinker, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We've worked hard at this. Actually, that's we a complete did. lie. We didn't work, We didn't do any work on this. <laughs> we just hey, we stumbled week. into the bar 50 times. That's not yeah. too bad. <laughs> this, all of this is just, just enabling me drunk to drink. Nights. Yeah, exactly. It's just an excuse to get drunk each night. It's great. <laughs> and a legit Nothing one, so it. we'll take mm. it. Uh, no, thank you for coming back, both of you. Um, we've, we've had both of you uh, on the open bar at various times, and, uh, you know, always a pleasure to have you back, so thank you. Um, Thanks, yeah, nice to meet everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I've also got, because, like, now that we've opened up some space, I'm going to bring some more people in. So mm. I've got uh, another Brit who's going to class things up with his witty and insightful banter. It's Disparu. Hello, well, sir. Yeah. That will move to New <laughs> Zealand. Yeah, it, it's good. I like that you were the one that actually dressed up in a suit for the 50th, and I'm just here in a T-shirt. I feel incredibly underdressed I, I, at this I, point. Well, we were getting we were backstage, right, getting ready to start the stream, and I just had a t-shirt on, and then Mauer was like, "What the fuck is that? Why aren't you wearing a suit?" <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even have a camera, and he's taking the piss but out of what you're wearing. Yeah, that's yeah. Really yeah does Mauer have a suit on? That's what we really need to know. Oh, totally, Mauer always has a suit. <laughs> <laughs> Mauer only he only movies. wears the gas mask for me. <laughs> yeah. So I was yeah, like, "Okay, fine, I'll go away and change." Are you my mom? Was that Gary? I said, "Are you my mommy?" Sorry, I'm making a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, I saw I yeah. saw that episode of Doctor Who. You did. I did. I, did. I watched it with him. Yeah. The hospital ship. Yeah. It was. It was. You know, it was charming. It was okay. a thing. You're being nice, Rags. I'm being nice because I, <laughs> I I don't I don't not to derail us or anything, but you did say the thing. Uh, but it, has, you know, it was nice. I never, I have not disliked watching any of the episodes. They all have. We could uh, give you a few that you would. I've seen. <laughs> now, no, I'm keeping it away from those. Are, ones. are these? Are these <laughs> episodes? I have seen the two good ones, so it's all good. 
Look, as long as the Allegedly. next three are good, I don't really care what they do afterwards. I just want David Tennant's next three to be decent. You if that happens, I'll be pray. <laughs> Well, I, th I think they can hold it together for three just to try and get people back in the hope that people continue to watch the rest. So even if this is bait, I'll, I'll accept the bait. I, mean, I would like to think that they'll have at least <laughs> enough respect for David Tennant that they wouldn't completely fuck him over. With I think they would lines. have respect for the fact that if this doesn't <clears throat> succeed, Doctor Who is dead. Yes. Yeah. We're already. <laughs> already. I mean, this. This. Yeah. Unless what they bring Matt here, Smith back it, next. Yeah. It's like it's on life support if it's like not good, but it's still worth buying, you know. But if it, this it, doesn't do good, like who's gonna? It's it's funny know. because each of these franchises has this little like murmur of life that comes into it right at the point of death. You know, with mm. with Star Trek, we had Picard season three. With uh. With Star Wars, we had Andor that was like a halfway well written show. Uh, well, and then with Doctor Who, with... I could bring yeah, yeah. Andor again. Yeah, Andor's yeah. good. Uh, mm -hmm. Not, yeah, but not necessarily really like edge of your seat right. viewing, but right. like no, well written. Me, yeah. you know? Oh, God. Uh, and, and... I thought that show was terrible. So oh, you're I. fucking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I choose it to go to sleep, to. Right. Uh, that, it was trash. I, how could you like it? Oh, because of the great themes, the great acting, the good writing, the pretty uh, well. Good actor? Uh, yeah, the dialogue, the story that held together, the characters that were really well fleshed out. Although I do understand there were not enough lightsabers and lasers. There laser weren't guns any lightsabers, <laughs> and no one yeah. said, no one mentioned high ground. Yeah. I think I think I, <laughs> even I think all of us here. Three. I think a little pl platoon's correct. Apart from those things, yeah, it wasn't one high ground. I, I think all of us would. I, I think all of us here would accept it wasn't exactly a, a thrill a minute kind of show. But it, was it was no was Phantom burn. Menace. Let's be. Be clear. No. <laughs> I will, no I will defend fight. Andor, though. But it was a side of Star Wars that I quite like to see. The 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 sort of down and dirty, like you know, um, low level stuff, like with just mm -hmm. uh, the workings of of the Empire, the the the. Um, the day-to-day -day lives building. of people yeah like actually yeah world building you, you actually felt like stuff was going on and it had an impact across the the galaxy that was nice i i like that i like when star wars used to do the, that um, part of gaz right like this enforcer higher level empire dude who's just like fucking silence those people get that sorted out there do this there and this whole giant round table of people that are all set to just destroy the galaxy and bureaucracy. It's just like, hey, yeah, I can take this. this yeah, we shit. got all kinds of locations from the lower class to the super high class places. We went to and forests, they, they, they felt real facilities. It felt, it did feel very real. Mm -hmm. Felt like the sets were actually sets. Um, I, w I was really impressed with it. I'm super uh, hopeful for season two. I want season two to be good so that we can say after long last, Finally, there's been something good from Star Wars since 1980. So that would be really neat. Well, I'm uh, glad some people enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the card. I don't understand. <laughs> just, just, can I also, just this, uh, as we're bringing people in here, we have also got joining us tonight, Melanie Mack, making her return Yay! to the open bar. Welcome back, Melanie. Thank you. Congratulations on 50 years of open bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we not gonna lie, I, I sort of forgot the meaning of the word anniversary and just like plonked it in there. <laughs> I love like, it. Wait a minute, we haven't been doing this for 50 years, and I'm pretty sure I'm not I've 50 been watching years old open yet. Bar since I was three years old, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of 50 years old, Melanie, is that uh, Laura Croft from Tomb Raider 2? Uh, yeah, she's got her Tomb Raider 2 bomber jacket, everything. Yeah, that's, that's good old See? classic well, Lara. See, we're doing old game references today. I, I love, love Tomb Raider it. too. I, I liked Tomb Raider when Tomb Raider was fun and Lara Croft was actually a cool character. Yep. Good I time. like the Tomb like Raider that. movie. Yeah, the Tomb Raider movie. The one where... They, Which one? You when know, the, the one. Giant machine robot <laughs> the one. Thing the and first the oh, we're thinking the one of with different Lara ones. Croft. Which one are you we're, thinking are of? We, I'm Riddle, thinking yeah, of the Riddle. new one that everyone remember or knows oh, remember. No remember one's that seen one? That. Yeah. No one cares about that. I saw it in theaters. Oh. I, I, still, I was I like, still... I'll check this out. I think with the with the material that they had to work with, it was a lot better than it could have been. <laughs> I think that. it Maybe. wasn't it wasn't like a complete disaster. It was more mm -hmm. just like forgettable. It was, it was super like, yeah. American feels, feels forgettable. Like a, stock action movie and lara croft who's like one of the most memorable characters of, mm -hmm. of video games ever just came across as really kind of like 
forgettable. Mm. Like she was yeah, fading right. into the background of her own movie. It was it was mm -hmm. odd. I don't know if it was the actress, like maybe just didn't have the the, the kind of charisma that you got from Angelina Jolie or whatever. But yeah. Um, yeah, it just didn't really own it. Didn't own the screen like I would have expected. Yeah, from she Lara didn't Croft. shoot me with a shotgun before I watched her take a bath. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, That's a good that. reference, right? That I respect scene that is one. Iconic. So. I love it. <laughs> well, I should ask you, Melanie, right? Um, okay. as, as, a, as a female gamer, do you feel represented in video games or are you one of the 74% who feels <laughs> Game represented? <arrests>, they're <laughs> I feel like I want to see video game character babes that are like an idealization, like an ideal beauty, something I want to aspire to. I don't want, uh, I don't want a character that's just like, oh, okay, she's just exactly like me. I need, I need some element of just greater than that. <laughs> When can we yeah. expect the uh, the videos from Star Wars Girl Baggage Claim and Melanie Mac where they take all of their Dove bars of soap and burn them in the backyard? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh are we going to get a yeah. gun and shoot them? Yeah. Like a Texan. Yeah. 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 Along with some, we have to burn some yeah. Nike bras along with it too. Yes, you're right. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Burn all the yeah. bras. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not I would happily live in a brawless world. I agree. Nobody <laughs> needs that, okay? Nobody needs that. Just what one time. What does soap smell like, I wonder? What does a burning bra smell like? <laughs> no, bit soap, but... Oh, burnt soap? What? It, it's surprisingly hard to catch fire. Like, and, you know. the, the weird thing about Dove is it is just soap, so you'd think it'd be a gender-neutral brand. You go to their videos yeah. page, you can scroll back 11 years, there is not a single man on any thumbnail. Like, don't use soap. <laughs> well, apparently, men, yeah, men just smell themselves naturally. It's like that's, that's just have it. A <laughs> Like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what brand my soap is. It's just soap. It's just, <laughs> probably, yeah. it probably comes in liquid form and you wash your hair with it at the same time. That's what every dude uses. Yeah, when, when I when I want to wash, I just like I just go and I wait for it to rain and I just go and stand outside for it. <laughs> <laughs> It in the UK, though, if, uh, that's every day. <laughs> like, come on. This is in your and, uh, country, that's you're... every minute of every day. So. I was going to say, it's just constant showers. That's kind of convenient. Three showers every day. Yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. It's nature shower. It's great. I like the idea that plenty of guys saw the ad. They were like, that's it. I'm getting rid of my Dove soap. Like, honey, do, how do, you, do we even have Dove, Dove, Dove soap? Bread? She's like, no, honey, we don't. It's like, oh, well, do we whatever. <laughs> it's like, buy some just so I can throw it out. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any Dove. I guess I'll burn the L'Oreal. Well, the, the, you know... <laughs> I'll just, just burn my house enough. down. <laughs> just burn the house down and everything in it. All right, what's his head yeah. and shoulders? Is no that more showers for anyone. So many brands have lost their minds recently. It's like, okay, yeah. uh, Bud Light has apparently yeah. fallen off the map. Miller Light has joined them because apparently, like, you know, if you yeah. don't, if you don't, like, give all your money to, to women brewers, then you're a, you know, a nightmare. Or the, something. the best thing about Miller Light is it was an old advert that got dug up. So they probably thought, like, we got yeah, away it, with it. Nobody it saw us. Everyone right. went mental yeah. over Bud Light. That was it. And then they're That's like, funny. oh, no. They but found imagine, it. It imagine if that was your mentality with right. your adverts, though, of like, oh, I hope no one sees this. <laughs> That's not yeah. really what you want. <laughs> yeah. That's how you, that is the mark of a good advertisement, a good commercial, is when you say, I hope no one sees this. Yeah. <laughs> Life under the radar. Well, that's the thing. You see their marketing department, and you're like, not, not a single one of you drink beer. Uh, ever. You're not... Like people, the companies well, need to learn. We remember when beer, it was it would just be Bud Light. But remember when games used to be advertised like made by gamers for gamers? That made sense because right. your target market should be the ones marketing the product. And now it's exactly. like, yeah, we hire everyone except our target demographic, and yeah. that's going to work out well. Hey, Disney's trying to disappear a show right now. They're trying to do that with an actual show with Echo. Which one? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I love oh, how it was pitched as like a good thing. This is the I, first I've... time we've ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard. I've heard. And it was our choice about that show. <laughs> it just sounded like a nightmare. I don't I think don't it know. was a happy set. Put it that way. Well, yeah. I, I mean, know you are ad, though. It was bizarre because when when she says, uh, "And what did they do for women? What did they do after all this? Like, put them in bikinis." And I was like, <laughs> "Right. So when when do they get to the problem? <laughs> it's like, yeah. where's, the, where's the criticism? Where's well, the?" It, yeah, I love how it opened as well, and it was like women were amongst the first people to be involved in brewing. 
And I thought, well, of course they fucking were. Your choices were men or yes. women. Like, of course they were among the first people. They had to be there. Women gave birth to the viewers. That's yeah. what they did. Out of all 74 genders. Women were among genders, the first species to brew beer. Second one to brew beer. I feel like I'm living under a rock. What are we talking about? You're living under a rock. You didn't see the Miller Lite ad? Yeah. I just woke up. It's well, pretty classic. Yeah. It was a few days ago. It was a few days ago, but I don't blame you if you needed extra sleep. <laughs> there, the, there's like this feminist woman who goes on screen and she's just like, hey, you know, women pioneered the way for beers. We're one of the first people to ever brew beer. Um, and they repay us by seconds. putting us in bikinis. <laughs> yeah. Didn't people used to drink beer because the water was like poisonous or toxic? Yes. So yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. drank yeah. beer back then. Everybody drank beer. But it's so funny because according to feminists, it's as if like until 19, the 1960s, women were just locked up in cages and didn't do anything. Yes, right? as opposed to... Um, <laughs> we were part the, of the thing they, the, To be fair, I, know, I, I don't want to offend any of the, the ladies present, but your kind really still hasn't been forgiven for bringing in prohibition in the 1920s because that was disproportionately <laughs> women. And that's one of the things they're not going to tell you when they do beer adverts. Women were some of the first people to brew, but they were also the people who ganged up and said, no, while the men are away at war, we're going to take away the booze from them so they'll be miserable as fuck when they come home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, that's it! <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing, they, they revise yeah, history. It's like we pretend that the 1930s weren't when women arrived from space. And that, you know, we, we <laughs> welcomed them in. But now they pretend like they were here the whole time. I just don't understand. <laughs> Before that, it was just like two dudes who would look at each other and be like, you want to make a baby? Yeah. And then it just appears. <laughs> and the sword this would one, fly dude. in and just Does drop the baby anything women off? should be like promoting beer because of all of like the beer goggles that guys get? Because like, there's a lot of women hey. that wouldn't have any chance if it wasn't for beer. I was so gonna say you could have an advert with a really fat, ugly woman, and she'd be like, "Look, I need beer. I like, don't it's advert. literally the only way I can get laid." <laughs> hey, for some women, that's the thing. If they put Lizzo in a commercial in a bikini, they'd be glorifying it. Who's seeing Beer Fest here? A whale Anybody seen Beer crap. Fest? Yeah, I've oh, seen yeah. it. Okay, so remember the dance. Broken scene. Lizard, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Think he's dancing with this really hot chick and takes her home and. And she wasn't. She was Lizzo. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. Oh. You guys remember Shallow Hal? That was a film. Yes. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to say, do you film, remember yeah. Shallon Showdown? I mean, we remember that too, yeah. Yeah. We're we're uh, here, right? oh, shit, I just realized Metal's backstage as well. I, didn't, I forgot to add him in. I'm wow. sorry. Metal, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Why you always too me? Far along. It's fine. I mean, I get forgotten all the time. I mean, <laughs> not by me, Metal. I think about you every night before I fall asleep. Oh, I, get, I listen wow. to all this up, <laughs> alt right pipeline stuff, and the drum is right there. here in backstage. And yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say when I when I, I bring in the Brits, I'm like, well, they can class things up a little bit with their their sly British humor, and then when it comes to a German, I'm like, what can he bring to the table? Nothing. Uh, beer. <laughs> beer. 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 Healthy nationalism. <laughs> To be fair, I, I was just in women? I was in Berlin just a few weeks ago and I fucking oh, loved sorry. it. Like the beer was fantastic, uh, the the food was great, and it was a very nice experience. I liked it, and the people were super friendly. All every single person I spoke to spoke English. Uh, German like, beer doesn't come with a hangover compared to English beer. No. I don't know what it is, but it's just way don't better. Drink enough of it, then. Don't know, yeah, you need to drink. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I drank enough. I gave, of it. I gave him my best shot when I was. Believe there. me. The only multinational thing days. that metal likes is the Blitzkrieg. Okay, let's be clear. <laughs> I like that drinking and describing his fun times is just like a compliment to metal somehow. Like, I, enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed metal the, responsible you, for your fun time. I'm happy you enjoyed yeah. the city I don't live in anywhere. Germans close were among to the first to brew beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> personally, I'm brewing some right and now. And women. Women. What thanks did they get? Later hosens. <laughs> yeah. They that's, how I say that's how you say goodbye to a German, right? Later, Hosen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only if it's a German that's woman, it, I suppose. A German but, yeah. Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> Germanian. I like this okay. one. Metal created Berlin. Thank you for making <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> Not bad, Mel. Wow, that's, yeah. that's Single handedly. That's why I don't have a lot of money, it's because I created Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, well, it's an expensive city to build, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah it was not worth it. Properly introduce him to the conversation. Mel, opinion on women. 
What do you think? Uh, hey or nay? Uh, <laughs> we can hey or nay? Should be, right? yes, should be allowed to exist. Well, try not to be offended if it's yeah. nay. <laughs> On a scale of yes to no, how do you feel about women? Uh, Metal, as a woman, do you feel excluded from, from 20, 26% of video games? Uh, I do now because I lost so much weight. It's like, damn it, I shouldn't have. No, I'm not represented anymore. Damn it. <laughs> Metal takes off the, the headphones and his face just whoomph. So well, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the only thing holding his head in check. A giant like, intellect. Like, really, I can have more way. strudel. The games <laughs> where you can like strudel. edit the bodies as much as possible, most people won't even choose to play as like a really fat person. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, with tiny like, arms. Can my skin yeah. be blue? Like, yes. Just so like, like the opposite. When you fat roll as a huge character in Dark Souls, it's just funny as fuck. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm oh, gonna oh, recreate oh. the traps from Indiana Jones. <laughs> Arc Survival okay. Evolved is basically like a giant, horrible war of like the deformed people. <laughs> the Everyone just models. maxes the sliders or makes them <laughs> minimal because they're the most horrific thing. Beautiful. Gary, you've been quiet for way too long. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, talk about <laughs> women or fat people or something. Are you talking about gaming yeah. or women? fat women. Yeah, uh, or whatever uh, you want to talk about. Talk about Marvel. Oh, Marvel. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I talked about Echo. Uh, all right, Gary, I, Marvel, yay or nay? Uh, Gary was the only nay. person to talk nay. about Echo. Oh, I, I know. Well, I'm the only one who's, who's heard of the character because not many people have heard of that character. She I have completely yeah, forgotten what Echo is. Can, can someone real, remind me what Echo is supposed here, to be? Here's a, here's Echo. a question. Introduce it, but also, why is it being released all at once, Gary? Why is that happening? Oh, uh, because they know it's a giant flop, so they need it to chart. Uh, so if they release it all at once, it has a chance of charting on the Nielsen ratings because like everyone can the chance it? of charting. Be yeah, I, mean, <laughs> it, it I liked as well how you talked about everyone hearing about Echo when she's fucking uh, deaf, you. Gary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, yeah, that, yeah, is, she, is that her gimmick? Her her power? She's yeah. deaf, yeah, and she's she's, she's yeah. blind or something. As well. oh, she's deaf or blind or something. <laughs> <laughs> something or, weird. I don't know. Something I don't know. Some part of her body doesn't work. Right, something doesn't whatever. work, right? I don't know. I don't know. And you have like the little child looking up to looking up to the car. It's like, oh man, I wish I would be deaf. That would be great, right? Well, a deaf amputee. Okay, because the, like she checks oh, every right. box. She's oh, she gets two powers. That's fucked up. Yeah, that's <laughs> <good. Yeah. laughs> and blind amputee. Uh, so they're dropping it all at once now. Kevin Feige just came out and said he's, sp you know, we need to spread out Marvel a little more. So his idea of spreading it out is releasing three things within two months. So we got mm -hmm. uh, Loki, then we got the Marvels, and then at the end of the month we get Echo, which has uh, Daredevil in it. But they're dropping it all at once, and they're saying it's a whole new strategy. But they just they just want it they want it to go away. Uh, it's pretty clear they want. Wait, to wait. Is, did it's they King literally King just King. pair them? Did they literally pair them up? Because it's like he can't see and she can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> just like, is this like that... <laughs> they're a full person? <laughs> wait, they're full yeah, person. It's like that. Here, he no, hear no evil, see no evil. Like <laughs> together, they have three legs. Well, there's gonna be a third. Uh, <laughs> there's, gonna, there's gonna be a third member of their crew who just can't smell, which is <laughs> yeah. you know, like, awful. I guess the can't but... smell guy is like, I'm a part of this too. Sure. <laughs> You're like, what's your superpower? He's like, I, 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 I can, I can, I can really smell. Well. My I can walk through a sewer really and not be right, I, <laughs> I can't smell anything. Wait, wait, wait. Correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they do like some kind of like spider woman thing where she was disabled and so her legs are just like yeah. swinging around yeah. back, <laughs> her back as she's swinging through the door. Ironically, a woman who uh, didn't have working legs was bitten by a creature with eight legs. People get Shimmy. so defensive of shit like that that they're like, oh, I see. So a guy from like space who can fly around and shoot lasers is fine, but a disabled woman using webs to fly around the city is too much. That is crossing really the line. Funny. Yeah. Just, it's just going to be funny watching her dangling legs smacking <laughs> the buildings and stuff when she's swinging around. <laughs> Hey, at least she can't feel it, so that's the advantage. <laughs> it's like criminals are shoot her in the legs, and she's like, ha ha, I can't feel a thing. <laughs> sure, like, the guy just jokes about with Joe all the time, where he's doing some, like, incredible feat, but his legs are always flippy-flopping all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the idea that during a writer's strike where you can't create new content, so you've got what you have and you need to make it last as long as possible, your strategy is to dump it all in one day oh, yeah. and see what happens. Oh. <laughs> like, 
It almost feels like it's like the quicker it's out, the quicker people will stop talking about whatever the yeah. hell we've made. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, look at Velma. Every week, it was like, have you seen what they've done this week? It's a disaster. And so it drags out that bad marketing so much longer than just getting rid of it. And it, like in three days, people forget. And you're going to have less videos because <clears throat> who's going to watch every episode in one day? If it's bad enough, I might. <laughs> I hope it has to be. Hey, yeah. Like the, 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 the one day sounds like well, I, it's might, I might watch it if it's really shit, and then I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to ask this, bro. Like having watched Gotham Knights now for like uh, what seems like months. Like, how is your sanity it holding is. up on this one? It, it has been months. It's been like nine episodes, and they've skipped two weeks as well. So every time I come to make an episode, I've like worked up to it that week, and it's like, no, it's not. It's not here next week. Gained the you have to extend it for an extra one. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, I don't have a video idea. I've not been working on any. I think I was relying on this disaster. So so everyone gets disappointed. <laughs> Look, they do. You send them hate mail like, hey, release the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was I prepared had, and now I'm going to do it for this week. week. <laughs> I, be, I did think it was going for nine episodes and then I found out it's going for 13. So I, I expected oh, to be wait. finished by this point. But uh, no. Th how can you make a Batman series and hate Batman? That's what I <laughs> like. They have humiliated yeah. Batman well, that, right that, from the start. Your answer. They've done it. That's well, they've that. been doing this since Batwoman. Batwoman yeah. hates Batman. He and, up in a flashback. Well, yeah, they, they really hate him in this. Most people hate Batman because he's rich and he's white. And so it's like yeah. the writers and, and all these writers oh, well, that they they're hiring that. are like blue haired people. <laughs> no, and... killing him. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm not I'm being serious. Uh, that, like Batman. Uh, so it, is like, he broke now? <laughs> he would have been. <laughs> the legitimate story of, of Gotham Knights is that Batman was going to become a communist and he was going to give all his money away. <laughs> and by giving all of his money away, he was going to cure crime throughout the city. Ooh. And because he was going to cure crime throughout the city, the Court of Owls killed him to prevent him giving his money away, therefore allowing crime to continue. And that's what the Court of Owls actually wanted. Oh. So, wow. First off, thus, okay, well, the thing is, it's proven that he wouldn't have cured crime Spoilers. because the Court of Owls still exists. <laughs> I love this name as well, the Court of Owls. Like, you might as well yeah, call it like, the, court, the Court of Ferrets or the Court of like, <laughs> Otters or something. Court of Owls. And, and the, the, the Court of Owls is the Court of Owls <laughs> is the rich elite of the city, therefore proving the opposite of what they're saying, which is p being poor causes crime. Right. Guys, <laughs> they it's destroyed their own argument. Wow. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't watch this. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, really so did. I, I just, I, 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 just I, I just love how all these like rich Hollywood's like assholes love communism so much. Mm -hmm. Like not oh. realizing like if you if they the glorious revolution ever happened, you guys would be the first ones that were put up against the wall. Like, <laughs> they would be Batman. Well, why do you love this Living so in much? ivory towers. <laughs> Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Time. Like some of the first biggest donors to Lenin's Bolshevik Party were the owners of the biggest Russian banks because they thought it was cool and fashionable to be on mm -hmm. the side of the working people. And they ended up first on the line uh, when yep. the working people took up their arms. So, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to some Hollywood they people facing a firing arms. squad, but ideally, <laughs> ideally not. <laughs> I'd rather see them like digging holes and stuff. That I mean, if they're, they're, they're going to get their communist yeah. utopia, that would be the greatest thing. I, I mean, I'd be right next to them, but at least I've dug a hole before. So uh, yeah, I, I opened I, up a new hole factory down the yeah. street. Man. Oh, hole yeah. factory, idiots! <laughs> <laughs> we, really produce, we produce That's best why, holes in Moscow. That's why, you know, like, it, it, it's a perfect time to strike. You know, during layoffs and an economic turned uh, downturn. It's it, and and they're convinced that there's just all this money out there. I talked to uh, the negotiator last night. Uh, the Is that a superhero? Kenobi? <laughs> is that one of the, on, the no, superheroes no. in Echo, the negotiator? No. Well, there is a negotiator, but um, that like they, uh, it was the negotiator for the WGA. I was talking to him with oh. Meyer Burnett last yeah, night. Yeah, that was on Robert's Stream. Yeah. Golf Association. Yeah. Uh, uh, sponsored by John Campia, by the way. I just want to point that out. And uh, yeah, it was awesome that I was on a live stream sponsored by John Campia. That was funny <laughs> as hell. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we a couple. Of th we didn't find out much. He couldn't say much. Like there was a bunch of stuff we talked beforehand. He's like, I can't say this, can't say that. But we did find out that uh, he thinks uh, I, it was hard to hear this. So he's like, Yeah, it's really unfortunate that a bunch of people got laid off, but I don't care because that layoff gave the company's profits, and we want a piece of those profits. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah, union man yeah and he's, that's what union, union guy and yeah so he like all the people who got laid off he's all well they do that the companies do that to increase profits so we mm -hmm. want a piece of that and then um 
he also said, which I mean, I guess we all knew this, but I asked him specifically, I'm like, who has access to the streaming numbers? Like specifically, who knows them? Because you guys are getting paid off them. And he said, nobody, absolutely nobody. Maybe the executive producer. So like for someone Star has Trek, to know, Alex, right? Be Alex Kurtzman. And then he like said, members, and he high was- up members of the guilds like Kevin Feige would know, but nobody else knows. And they yeah, because they're not getting paid off the numbers. They're getting paid off the subscription numbers. Well, no, they're getting. They're supposed to be getting residuals based on how many how many times they're watched on the subscription services. But these are no. That's never- what they're at. The, the, what I've read is like because what they've demanded is that so that they get it off the viewership. No, no. Okay, so no. They, but the previous they, was off the. Sub- they want more from residuals. They want a piece they? of the subscription, but that subscription is also based on what their content specifically contributed to that subscription right so mm. they're they're fighting for those numbers uh and they think they're going to get them i i don't i hope I, so i i hope so too i, like, I for, don't believe it. I, but i i think the producers will die on that hill before they let that know because i and and he also said the wga the ne- lead negotiators or the higher ups know those numbers too but can't share them mm. which i think is really weird well, at some point, someone's going to get a really good lawyer. Because if you look at like the cast of Friends, any time an episode of Friends plays, they get like a million dollars or something. So I'm yeah. sure if everything's on like a subscription base that's not on cable, so they're not making that money anymore. So they're going to want that. And he, I mean, uh, I, I think that they're entitled to that. That's their work. And, you know, that's what they signed well, up. Yeah, I think I, I, I want to know it just purely for selfish reasons. So yeah. I can prove how <laughs> these things are, are not failing. But yeah, they should get paid off it. And uh, he believes, and, and he, I think he's right about this, is now that the ad tiers are coming in and advertisers are coming in, they're going to, they're not going to pay for shit unless they see real numbers. Because uh, yeah. that's how ads were based here in the United States forever is like, say, there's an episode of Friends. Some local TV network says, hey, this is the most watched thing, uh, you know, at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but then they, that's how they charge for the highest ad rates. Well, how the hell do you do that on streaming at, at all? Well, you have to show the numbers. You have to show how. And, yeah, and how many views all- is my ad paying? You know, is, is are people going to see if I pay for an ad? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And they have access to all the analytics that like like we all <laughs> look it. at our analytics for our videos and we know like what people are eating practically when they're watching our, our videos that they know the same thing and that, but they're not telling anybody. And this is a town that lives off of box office numbers. God, I, I would have loved to fucking know the numbers for all the shows and how they relate to each other. Loki's yeah. probably the only one that we would all go. Yeah. Solid numbers. I imagine <laughs> the rest of them would be like, Ooh, <laughs> I, I, I would love to see the numbers for rings of power. Oh yeah. Cause like yeah. Yeah. never got proper the drop numbers off. on that one. Oh God, that's brutal. Yeah. What, and, that, was, I, I, I today checked, just for fun on YouTube, because you can get like movies on YouTube, right? You can buy them from their movie library or whatever. Yeah. It's like, do they have like the numbers? How many people watch them? It's like, no, they don't have them there at all. I was like, huh, interesting. Because mm. like, how many people did watch Dune back in the day? And it's like, I don't know. It's not going to tell me. You can just buy them there and watch. And it's like, because I just thought it was integrated in the YouTube system. And then you just get the numbers. Like, no, you don't even see them there. Where you, where you expect to see the numbers. Because normally you see a video. It's like, oh, this has X amount of numbers. Uh, views, I mean. But with, a the, bit like, with the videos, like, no, no, not at all. Information like that, you really have to think when you're in their position. Like, how does this benefit me to share that information? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll just keep it to myself. No, <laughs> like, if, if they don't say the numbers, yeah. it's not good news. And they can just say it's good news. It broke records. I'm not going to tell you which ones, but it Mm -hmm. did. Yeah, (laughs) you can say anything. Like, the engagement of this was, uh, like, 500% better than we expected. It's like, engagement just counts as, like, people talking about it online. And that talk would be like, can you believe how shit this was? (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like it's still engagement, you know. I mean, that was the whole thing with Velma, right? Talking. Yeah, when Velma came out and they said yeah. it's yeah. the number one HBO original animated production ever on HBO Max, which is already a hell of a lot of qualifiers in that sentence. Um, Made by a woman named think, Cindy. Well, what what qualifies as, a, Mindy, as an impression yeah. here? Well, it's like anyone tweeting about it qual- qualifies. Okay. Yep. Also, how yeah. many other animated originals have you put out on HBO Max? Uh, two? Okay. So it's it's not the best metric to use, I don't think. Don't mm-hmm. ever trust what they say. Yeah, but yeah. doesn't it look good when you put it out on Twitter, though? It's like, look how it's the best <laughs> well, one we have. I, I just... I, all I, the two. With, with something like Velma, about I, Velma. I have to assume, like, the marketing strategy must just be based entirely around hate clicks. 
It's like yeah. they must have realized like people are not going to receive this well. This is not going to be a popular show. Uh, the only thing we can use is outrage to try and get people interested in this somehow. Outrage marketing doesn't work unless you've got an opposite audience which agrees with mm -hmm. you. That's the problem. Like, yep. the the whole idea of uh, all marketing is like good marketing doesn't make sense. It it had never been true. The it's only mm -hmm. because you assume there's two sides of every argument. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Velma, mm -hmm. everybody thought it sucked. It's like Queen Cleopatra. It's like one it. and two yeah, percent. Yeah. Yep. Everybody thought it sucked. And so if it's, that was your strategy, it's, it's because you don't understand marketing to begin with. Well, the and great most unifier. Of all, you got like a bunch of 25 year olds coming in and running it. There there was a time, Disparu, uh, that uh, people said that Captain Marvel benefited from that. There was a time they were trying to run that narrative that they that divided the audience and there was enough clap back on people criticizing it that benefited the movie, completely ignoring it came in between two of the most anticipated yeah. sequels of all time. Uh, but that narrative, they tried it for a while. But no, that, but Hollywood will repeat stuff based on a previous success for years and fail at it for years. That's how dumb they are. And also uh, doesn't help when they immediately go like, "Yeah, you get three seasons of that." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, why?" Well, that has got a second, so <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, what I'm I mean. looking forward to it. I might be the only person. <laughs> I think, that to I that, think like, we all are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You was like people they haven't really done anything before. It's like, yeah, you get like fifteen quadrillion dollars for seventeen seasons. Go nuts! Like, okay. I love the idea I mean, they keep making deals like that. Eventually, they're like, whoa, how are we losing money? What's going on? What happened? <laughs> Where did we start? Nobody watching our. Is our thinking flawed at all? <laughs> no, it's just, just been, wrong. Just before we keep going, uh, I just wanted to do a couple of super chats because there's a couple of big ones that have come in. Uh, there's one here for two hundred dollars. So uh, oh that was from that? Grendel God. Vivat, who says, "Congratulations on fifty episodes, Drinker. Hail to the critical doggos and this all-star panel." Oh, hey! Thank you very much, man. And I'm sorry that the critical doggos weren't on tonight, but we did have rags. Oh, we we yeah. do still have rags, actually. Wait, you're still here? Uh, yeah, the dog cam is not active tonight because there's too many other people involved. But uh, yeah, thanks, man. <clears throat> uh, and another one from J Mac for two hundred dollars as well says, uh, "Finish the ad. You have to show the self insert." <laughs> I'm not sure what that's for actually. Oh, I think. Oh wait, yeah, that. Oh, was that. Bit. Yeah, the girl, the model for the dove ad. Yes, I'm Which sorry. Which they made get... the character model thinner than her, so <laughs> they kind of defeated yeah. the whole purpose yeah, of what that did. was. Yeah. When people started telling me about that, I was like, you, it's, it's a soap company. You can't be serious. That doesn't happen. <laughs> then I saw the tourists like, what is happening? Well, you need more soap. Well, it's like Don't you want more ice cream. people? It's like buy more Jerry's... soap. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. Ben and, and Jerry's ice cream. Like, you yeah. guys make overpriced frozen cream, and yet, like, you suddenly think you're going to weigh in on, like, <laughs> social political issues. Like, we're talking about over ice cream now. <laughs> well, <laughs> why do they have to be different? <laughs> 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 do you think fat people use ice cream as soap? <laughs> <laughs> Too many. <laughs> I love I think, the way no, it no, feels on my skin. Well, I think, I think fat people that. use soap as ice cream. <laughs> 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 They use the mint chocolate chip. Any port in a store. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, Ben and Jerry's is owned by Unilever, which owns Dove. Uh, yes. What? So it might be... The how many, wow, how many well, brands does this place then. own? They own loads. They're actually based about two miles yeah. up the road from where I'm currently sitting. So I could actually yeah. take this bottle of whiskey and go Molotov cocktail them, but I think that would be illegal. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you, you think? On, strap You're on a suicide sure. vest and off you go. I think you can, uh, you can sure. fix this problem. Why don't you go try it out? We got your back. I could That's have right. a go, couldn't I? But but then again, I mean, how how can we possibly solve the Arab-Israeli conflict without the wisdom of Ben & Jerry's ice cream? This is um, true. true. This is Good true. Point. They own a brand called The Vegetarian Butcher. Oh, oh, that's, wow! That's, 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 wait, how, just how does clear. that even work? Just to be clear, he's that's just a salary uh, that he's going. That's just a farmer. Robert Downey Jr. apparently is is backing one of these vegetarian state companies, and. Robert Downey Jr. looks like he's barely clinging yeah. on to life. Yeah, and, and it lo he looks worse than ever now. It's what like this, this Did, vegan yeah, diet vegan? is not helping him. Oh yeah, he went vegan, and it's been I don't know a year or two, and. He's deteriorating fast. Is someone, someone, now. He's 57, I think. And he did like hard drugs for a majority of his life. 
So I mean, he, sometimes that catches. Yeah, but he looks worse. No, now. but like, but he, he looked, just he, like, the... he got off the drugs when he did Iron Man and all that yeah. stuff, and he looked pretty good then. It's just like ever since, like, damn, ever since leaving the the Marvel universe, he's aged about exactly. twenty years. Yeah, they it, should have called such him a Protein short Man. Time frame. Yeah. It, well, he's Iron <laughs> Deficiency <laughs> Man now. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, just just before we go on uh, i know gary you're you're pretty much out of time man uh i want to say thank you for being on as long as you have like i sure. really appreciate it uh yeah love you man thank you for love you this. man uh, <laughs> it was great seeing you all have a good one thanks sure, gary. Sorry, i gotta bye, go bye. 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 rags you're a good dog oh thank you <laughs> no yeah by implication the rest of <laughs> the bad dogs <laughs> has anyone said hi to you yet rags I um, a few people have implied it. Hi, Rags. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi, Rags. Hey there. Hello. <laughs> well, what did you think about uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake, Rags? I thought and it women. was pretty good. Really? I, 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 you really? I did. I, yeah. I remember you were like, uh, I wasn't sure what you were going to think. Now, rank the other remakes. To, yeah. Rank My... next to the other remakes. What's your thoughts? So, uh, let me see. I didn't, I, I guess I have a controversial opinion. I didn't like the RE2 remake. It's not my okay. kind of game. I don't, I, I that don't is like controversial it. Yeah. indeed. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I don't like the, okay. a lot of the mechanics in it. I just never finished it. I thought it was a dull, boring uh, slog. I never finished <sighs> it. But you know what? If you like it, that is a okay. I have nothing against you. You um, are valid if you like it. What that's you true. Think about that's right. RE... And Temple of what? Doom is better than the... What? What do you think about the RE3 remake? Just I didn't play it. Really? Not at all? Oh, not at all. But wow. I played the RE4 remake and I quite enjoyed it. I don't think it's as good as the original mechanically, but right. I really, really enjoy a lot of the things that they did with it in terms of writing and expansion of the characters, kind of tightening up the story and a lot of the you know, little uh, fiddling that they did here and there. It looks gorgeous and it was clearly mm -hmm. made by people who had a love and respect of the original game. Uh, Resident okay. Evil 4 is a special place in my little doggy heart when it comes to gaming. It's the first M-rated game I ever bought. Uh, I don't think GameStop was actually Ooh. legally allowed to sell it to me, but they they did. To them. So, but they knew. Uh, they knew how important that sale was. Yeah. They, they were uh, like, well, it's different for dogs that age drinking. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when I bought it on GameCube, it was many yeah, years Seven ago. years, you know. <laughs> what, what, um, did, you, did you ever play the, the Resident Evil remake, like, of the first game? Um, oh, I... I don't think so. No, the the remake they made on oh, GameCube years back. I don't think you would uh, yeah, like it. They, they I don't think I would either. On PS4, it, yeah, because it, it is a lot slower and more puzzle based, and you seem to like. Okay, so without the implication that I'm stupid. Um, no, I, I I'm not saying that. that. The, uh, <laughs> I, I I don't think that that style of like movements and everything is something I right. would enjoy. Um, right. I can well, see hey. I can see why they're you know revered as classics and things of that nature, but they not quite something that I think I would enjoy. Uh, can, Melanie, can I say, did you play the Dead Space remake? What do you think of that? What I did? didn't. I didn't play it. I was, I was just really, it was really off putting how they uglified the women. They did like, it. Oh, what woman did they uglify? The, the Isaac's girlfriend. Oh, Nicole? They, yeah, you don't Nicole. like how they uglified her? I've got some bad news for you, sister. <laughs> well, the second one did too, but I'm just saying compared to the first one. I've got some bad news for you. It's, that's, the, that's the actress. Well, I honestly, I Tanya, agree. Tanya, I saw, I because I made a Tanya video about Clark this and I did is look the at the voice actress. actress. She's but, pretty good looking for her age, actually. First of all, she is way oh, older that, that than is not the Nicole compliment. is supposed to be, to my knowledge. No. But secondly, like I think the actress something. is prettier. She's yeah, way that is prettier not a compliment. than the actual game character. No, she is. she's a legitimately attractive woman. For but 50, the game you said character for her age. is awful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm well, a good yeah, looking guy for thirty one. Tend to look less attractive than young people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if this was a hot take. The fuck right? around, <laughs> <laughs> they but just I... look like young people, but their faces have melted. Young people, but melted. I think that if melted. you are doing yourself a great disservice, you, if you're not but playing you look attractive. Face remake because of that. Really? Yeah. So so it's it's a it's a wonderful remake. Uh, they have a lot of immense respect for the original. Mm -hmm. The people who made it clearly love Dead Space. The way that they expanded the characters' roles in the story, particularly Nicole's, is really excellent. Um, I think uh, Isaac's voice lines add a lot of, you know, I have a lot of good value to the character. The mechanics are excellent, uh, and the atmosphere and the lighting are stellar. Uh, I, I have, uh, we've sung its praises on an EFAP, and I'll continue to do so. Okay. I highly recommend the uh, Dead Space remake. Yes. 
That's good, but I don't know Very if that good. that can just uh, overshadow all of the the ugly characters. <laughs> I, I what, not, what's the other ugly character? character. If Tanya Clark me, isn't ugly, who is the other ugly character? No, can I can I, can I just say so Kendra can is I... not ugly. What universe are you from where Kendra's ugly? <laughs> The, this is the same line of thought that like Jin, Jill Valentine from the RE3 remake is ugly somehow. It's like I, I don't get it, but now, yeah, um, I don't think she's ugly. Listen, if you're saying but, the Necromorphs are ugly, I'm with you. Okay, I get it. <laughs> well, you know, right. she's a, a little, like I'm, after I'm after a few pints, you still would. Like, let's be honest here. <laughs> Even the fat you still would. Yeah, seventy four percent. You could like, probably do a like, lot more. With I've dated couple. worse. Okay. <laughs> the necromorphs. The vomit yeah. is more of an expression of love. Good God. Stuff, you know. <laughs> you clearly you've never been in a nightclub in Scotland. Like, I wasn't. That's true. True. <laughs> Maybe I need to actually now that I hear that I should probably shouldn't change that then. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna <laughs> ask like though, I haven't played the RE4 remake. Um, I still never liked Sadler as a villain. He's I better always thought in the he remake. Was... He's better in the remake. Yeah. I think that but in the even then he better. still feels very flat he, he, like he doesn't really have much backstory he doesn't have much um... well they've added some backstory to him and them. his family and i think that the changes and sort of how he prevent uh, presents his motivation uh, is a lot better uh, it's, one it's thing definitely I really... a step in the right direction i just i d didn't really feel like i knew who this guy was in the remake that the you didn't play game. Yeah, or... no, you did play. You did play. Oh, you did play. Okay, I thought he said he didn't play it. So I was like, no, oh, no, no. Really I've I've played. Game. I played the original back on the GameCube back yeah. in the day, and I played uh, the the remake now. And like, still, even then, like, I don't feel like I got a good sense of who Sadler was as a person. Um, I think he's way better in the remake. He was kind of so-so in the original. I think he's got a neat voice, but that's kind of all he has going for him. He just turns into Blarg. I'm evil. Take over the world kind of guy. And I yeah. really like in the remake how they really played up that culty religious angle that he has. Like he truly is this religious zealot of this religion that he's following and how the thing that makes him eventually, eventually turn into the final boss in his monstrous form is when he learns about Leon, you know, destroying the Plagas and the desecration of this, you know, this holy creature as he believes it to be. Um, I, I think as, as well, like, and this is just a personal preference, so it's not it's not an objective thing but like my my preference for the resident evil games is that they be grounded in more like um evil corporations trying to like bioengineer weapons and stuff like that rather than like religious cults oh i love the i, I am the really? op i'm actually of the opposite opinion uh and, and it's I fine like that's... either way is fine like it's just a personal preference rather than anything like you know super objective or anything it's just like i never found that that was like the grounding of the resident evil series it was always great it was always grounded in science and uh and corporations um... and greed and stuff like that one of my thoughts concerning Resident Evil Village, which was a terrible, awful game, uh, is that yeah. I think that they just, I think that they, we have essentially, for all intents and purposes, gone into the realm of fantasy anyway. You could say that it's science and bioengineering, but looking at what these things do and what they can become, we're basically in magic land. So maybe it might not be a bad idea for you to sort of start leaning into the element of the supernatural, have some proper ass curses and things of that nature. This isn't about science anymore. This isn't this isn't a natural thing. We're in the realm of the supernatural. I think that would be really nifty. Some really classic werewolf vampire Innistrad kind of stuff. I but, really um, like the use of the Plagas through like a symbiotic mind control that a cult it would match a cult quite a bit. He could use that very powerfully. And yeah, uh saddest thing out of all the villains is that he just seemed completely convinced that this was right, that the Plagas being given to the world was really important and good. Meanwhile, you have like the uh, Mendez who fe felt like he cared for the when you get yeah, his background, of course, he cared for the village specifically, like and all the people there, and that making sure they were okay. And then Krauser, who's like in it for power, and uh, Salazar, who I think you could consider him quite a subservient to Sadler, but still, everyone thinks of Sa uh, Salazar as like a completely unique and fucking crazy bad guy to have in a really fun way. Fucking love Resident Evil Four. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, sadly, was, I, I, was I, I, I was part of the guys like Wesker, where it's just like, yeah, I just want to like sell all of these like bio weapons to the highest bidder and make myself a fuck ton of money, and also turn myself into like a superhuman killing machine. 
Well, Cause he wants not? to like he... reinvent humanity and he wants to like change everything from the ground up completely and totally. And it's a bit nefarious and sort of over the top, but there's a level of that that I kind of like about Wesker that he has this almost silly quality to him and he says Chris a lot and it's funny. Oh, dude, and... yeah. <laughs> I, I want an accurate, faithful remake of the Resident Evil 5, okay? Not mechanically. <laughs> don't ruin don't ruin Wesker yeah. by fixing him, okay? We love exactly. him. Dude, wait, I, I want to have, I wanna have like... Chris Redfield with his fucking gigantic yes! arms. Yeah, yes! I that, uh, if they remake it, you know, we got to remove him punching the boulder. I was like, no! We no, gotta put that's got to stay. Punch him. Don't you dare. No. To stay. They have that's got, got to, part of the uh, game. They've got to just just for Dove. They need to include Sheva's tribal outfit and all that, you know, all that <laughs> oh, stuff from yeah. back in the day. Need to oh, soap yeah. outfit. She's just her soap <laughs> outfit. Just, <laughs> just Dove soap. Oh, she just has like soap suds covering her nipples in her granular Ooh. region, and that's Perfect. it. Or just like like soap bars, just like you know, yeah. pinned there. You know. Yeah. I'm not a game of planes like rain, 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 rain. I just that's a game that wouldn't get made today. Because mm -hmm. when you've got like a white protagonist killing hordes of like black, like <laughs> savages, like, that's why they, they even not, yeah, added they got Shiva, trouble back then, Shiva, yeah. I think, yeah, because they didn't introduce her at all, and all of a sudden they're like, Why is Chris just killing a bunch of black people? And so then they added, <laughs> they added, yeah. because they live there, <laughs> got infected. they added a black person <laughs> that, that, that he didn't yeah. kill. But fucking Capcom was just like, I don't know, this should be a game with Chris <laughs> killing black people. <laughs> Capcom, why not? I don't know. Capcom, why did you set your game in Africa? No, re no reason. No reason. No reason. No reason. <laughs> it's great when you get. It's great when you get Japanese developers who don't have any of that sort of Western cultural yeah. hang up about any of this stuff, just like wading into this Dude, whole like, debate. There were people on the team who were like, nobody shed a tear for the Spaniards. Oh, the Spaniards were like, hey, let's do something like over in Africa or something. Oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Or how many games are we killing Germans? Like, Germans are bad guys all the time. Yeah. Germans and Russians. Well, metal can I was going to say fiction. The fiction equivalent of that is when we portray them as good guys, and it's very confusing. It's like, what's going on? It's like, whoa. And I'm in my car, it's like, yay. Hooray. The thing is, we were talking. We were talking earlier, right, about um, you know every every franchise that we've been mourning the death of has had the, this little like flatulence of life that's like rippled <laughs> through it for like a, a few weeks and then it's gone again. You mm -hmm. know, and like in the case of Star Wars, we had Andor. In the case of um, Doctor Who, we've got the return of David Tennant. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of Star Trek, we had Picard season three. And like. I was kind of curious, like Anna, like I know you're you're big into Star Trek. Like, did you get a chance to watch Picard? I season did. Three? I watched it all and I loved it. At first, I was hesitant because, you know, when you get annoyed because like everyone's like, you got to do this thing, you got to do this thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I will, but now I don't want to just because <laughs> everyone's telling me to. Yeah, and wearing clothes, paying for things. <laughs> Well, you know what I'm bathing I'm every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good with, with, with soap or ice cream. In, in England, you don't get a choice. <laughs> but no, I watched it and I really, really a full enjoyed. bath for the queen. <laughs> King, <laughs> sir. King. <laughs> At the moment. At the moment. Uh, <laughs> my, you never know. Yeah. Well, he's not going to be around for too long. I don't imagine. But uh, no, allegedly, like, yeah, allegedly, I, allegedly. We uh yeah we watched Picard season three and like man like you you'd struggle to find anyone who hated where Star Trek has gone more than I have but uh, even I was mm. won over a little bit by the third season of Picard. Chill. Uh, I know. I, I well, what can I say? Yeah, uh, I got paid. <laughs> I got paid well for it. No, but like, <laughs> um, you know, I always believe in giving credit where credit's due and bringing in a whole different creative team and uh, completely changing the mindset of what you were trying to do. Wow, it's it's amazing the difference it makes. And suddenly you've got a show that uh, people can enjoy again. And so, uh, yeah, it's important. They watch Star Trek, right? Star Trek makes a big difference. Yeah, but if only they'd done that from season one. They, they could have mm. had such a hit show on their hands. They would have had three seasons that were fully supported by the fans. Mm-hmm. You know, it, yeah. it drove me crazy because Michael Shabon, the guy that wrote season one, the whole entire season one is about evil androids. And he did this thing on Instagram where he would answer questions after each episode. And I asked him, like, well, where is lore? And sincerely, he asked, like, he's like, who's lore? And I'm like, oh, my. 
are you serious? You wrote an entire season of Star Trek about evil androids and you don't know about the one main evil android? Like, what the hell? Bring, and that's why Laura is mentioned it at all. What Drink was just saying about like how if, if it were as good as season three for all three, it probably would have been beloved because mm -hmm. the hatred of season one and two has made people refuse to take in season three. And of those who did take it in, we're still like, nah, this still has a stain on it. Not, not don't like this shit. But if they'd done it from the beginning, oh, we might have been hearing about how that was an incredible end to a great sort of mini series, essentially, like three season story. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I didn't watch it because when I saw the trailer for Picard, I, you know, Picard is one of my favorite characters. I love TNG and I just didn't want that character to be ruined. So I didn't want to see an old sad version getting well, ruined. I mean, that's very yeah. much what you got with the first two seasons. And I think mm -hmm. some of that was down right. to Patrick Stewart. I think he said, like, I don't want to come back and just do a TNG reunion show. I want it to be mm -hmm. something different. Mm -hmm. uh, I want it to be got the Picard suffering tour. And so, well, he got what, yeah. He, yeah, he, got what he wanted. <laughs> he also um, wanted he, it to be very didactic commentary on the state of modern society, which yeah, lots of people will turn around to you and say, well, Star Trek has always been political, but that difference is a difference in approach. Back in the day, yeah, it could ask you, good. interesting, it used to be it's good, subtle, yeah. being good helped, but also, you know, back in the day, its approach to social questions and questions of social policy was, let's debate both sides of this issue, let's do it in an intelligent yes. way, and let's leave the audience asking these questions of themselves once we've finished, not let's have this old dribbling man tell us about how Brexit like about how bad Brexit <laughs> yeah. is, or like let's yeah. go back in time to stop Donald Trump being elected and getting fascism in Star Trek in the year 2024. <laughs> like that, that's not what that show has ever been. So all those people who said it's always been political don't understand the difference between sort of politics as art and the artistic approach to politics as two well, the, very the, different things. Yeah, there's difference between Absolutely. political ideas and political uh, indoctrination. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's a very yeah, clear but, but distinction there. The episode where Britain left the Federation was a little on the nose, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly everything became shit in Britain, you know, yeah. That, that's um, the thing, though. The, the, there's a fun area of playing ideas where you can be like, well, this is the idea and the concept. What would happen if we altered some of these variables and see where it led? Whereas you've got the other tactic, which is, this is my opinion of what would happen in this idea. I want to see my opinion played out and everybody... Like, yeah. one is an attempt to... It, it's almost like um, a, a, a mental challenge just to see where you would be led. And the other is, I want to teach people that this is the horrible problem of not being uh, like part of my worldview. And that's what you had with the first season of Picard. It was, I want to teach you something. Whereas the third yeah. one, I have a lot of problems with the plot of the third one. But I found myself not caring about them because the actors and um, the cast and the nostalgia moments let elevated it to a level where I was like, oh, I can look past this because I enjoy this part so much. Whereas in the first part, because I really hated what they were doing with everything else, all of the small problems or the problems with the plot meant a lot more to me. And I do find myself with the third one thinking, if you didn't have the original cast, would I have the same opinion? And I don't think I would. Um, just, well, I just, assume they just, go with just, the established characters from TNG then, right? Th they do that, that makes sense because I'm, I'm completely new to tng i'm just i've just finished season two of tng uh so i'm still going through it and oh, one day i'll watch you, picard you... to see what's happening i've seen things and it looks very i would wait until you watch the entire show to watch it because yeah. there's things in it you're gonna definitely miss, you know? oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go through that uh and you have to you have to then watch the tng movies and i apologize in advance for that <laughs> but, uh, yeah i heard there's uh, some that, not so good ones just, yeah. just before we go on, um, I know there's there's a few other people trying to get in backstage, um, and like we've obviously got a full bar at the moment. Um, so what I, if if there's people who are kind of at the, the end of their time here, or they they've run out of time, um, please do let me know, and, and we can like bring you out. Um, yeah, we'll bring a few more people in. Uh, All I right, think Melanie, gonna, you. Yeah, I I gotta go ahead and make me some food. All right, <laughs> nice very <one>. well. <laughs> Thank Salute you for you. thank you for joining us, Melanie. It's been an awesome pleasure to have you back on as always. Thank you so much. It was great hanging out with you guys. Have bye. a good night. Bye. Good thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Uh, all right. Uh, is everyone else good? To space. Go? I'm happy to stay, but if you need spaces, I have been here from the start. Yeah, so I can I always scoot if you need to make some room. Just let me know. Give me a home. Drink is going to have to get all mean. 
Go on, dude, you can do yeah. it. Uh, well, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go clockwise. So, um, Rags, uh, I thank you very much for being in tonight. But if, you, you if you're bet. cool, uh, we can take you out and uh, we'll bring some more people in. Yeah, you bet. I will see y'all later. Good job on the 50 episodes. Hopefully there will be many more to come. And I will continue watching. And I will see y'all later. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Happy trails. All right, cool. We freed up some space, so we'll bring we'll bring some more people in in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we, we were just talking about um, Star Trek there and Picard and stuff. I, I guess... Um, I like yeah, how you would... season one and two are supposed to be the bad ones. And we're like, man, can I get more bad things today like this? Because <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> the, it's it's so much better. Like, when you go back to Picard, sorry, no, um, the next generation, like the first couple of seasons, that was very much a hangover from um, the 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 early days of Original. star trek i think what they did was mm. they actually used some of the the plot lines and some of the unused scripts from the original series oh, okay uh they just recycled them for that so it's very like disjointed and the characters are a bit weird they they clearly hadn't quite figured out you, what they you can tell in the be. first in the first season specifically it's like oh you still kind of behaving a little bit weirdly not like yeah. i remembered when i was a child and then as it goes on it's like oh yeah now i remember you more and then Riker gets to... his beard. It's like now I remember you for sure. <laughs> Once Riker gets his beard, that's when you know, like they're not like, fucking everything around is okay anymore. now. Yeah, uh, things are. This, right. this, this, like this gentleman on... that we've brought in here can tell us all about it. I, I just can't right believe now. you bring me in here and I just hear the words Star Trek. I like. Did you do that? On... Did you, <laughs> you do hear that on the purpose? word Riker's beard? And you're like, yes, I'm done. <laughs> Riker's beard. That's the second season that happened in the second season. It felt familiar when it finally happens. Like, oh, that's how I remember you. <laughs> yeah, the first two seasons are a little rough. Yeah, yeah growing I beard is a TV seasons. trope, right? It's I'm, I'm very when oh, they come into like a show comes into its own, or even I think it applies to more than just TV shows. But it's just when it's like, there you go, they've got it now. The formula's down. Uh, it's a different point with lots of TV shows. Like I, I would say Buffy got it at like the formula sorted at around season end of two, beginning of three. Star Trek from sounds of it, would you say it was season two, halfway through TNG? I, like I think about like end of season two, beginning of season three. I think yeah. that's when it By the really way, I just wanted everyone to know I'm drinking water. Okay. Water. Boom. I'm not, I'm not. Why are you drinking not... fucking rain? <laughs> 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 this is my Avatar 2 way of the water, uh, way of water uh, cup. <laughs> Stole that uh, from cinema. All right, just don't put your tail <laughs> at anything, okay? No, I won't. It goes like I won't do that. <laughs> were you really talking Star Trek when I got in here? That's crazy. No, no, yeah, yeah, we were legit. Were well, yeah, we we were talking about Picard and so on, and um, yeah, just led us talking about TNG and like where where it becomes good, all that stuff. Well, you know, it it really changed. It was season three because they hired a new head writer, uh, a guy named Michael Pillar, who was the head of the writing staff, and he actually changed. With Star Trek, the first two seasons, they were trying to emulate the formula of the original series. I think that, that's kind of what you were saying, and it, it wasn't really working. So Michael Pillar had a new mandate for the writing staff where he said, all of our stories must begin with one of our characters. Instead of something coming from outside to us, all of our stories have to be generated from our characters uh, looking outward. So like you had a great third season episode, episode called the offspring where data made his daughter he created oh, his wow, daughter yeah. lol wow. and and yeah. that was that was actually the first episode of star trek that jonathan frakes directed he started directing in the third season but that was you know it was a it was a, a great a great story about life and family and and fatherhood and artificial intelligence but you know it was data doing something and that's where the story came from as opposed to some alien force from the outside coming in because well, it did, it writers, really was working. Now writers have taken it one step further, and it's not from the character outwards. It's from the writer is now putting themselves in the place of the character oh, and writing as if they were the person outwards. It's so, true. I mean, that which, yeah. which which was you know that was the the concept of a Mary Sue really started with Star Trek novelists yep. who <laughs> were. And and like there was a, a series of books. One of them was called Dreadnought, I think, by J. M. Dillard. And they were writing, and these were real published novels, and they were writing themselves into the story, and they would rescue the whole crew. You know, they'd be like some lonely or lowly ensign that would show up and rescue Kirk and company or rescue Picard and company. And that's, so Star Trek kind of spawned that whole idea. 
but it was the it was it wasn't that the characters the characters were as you said avatars for the writers themselves that were writing themselves into these stories it was so weird hmm. um just before we go on we've uh, we've got rakita oh, yep. nick rakita you're a hey hero. what's up guys Hello. yeah sorry like just an hour late it's fine <laughs> <laughs> hey man, honestly, like we, because we've tried to get you on various like uh, open bars, and I know it's not worked out schedule wise and stuff. So I'm glad we were able to get you in for this. And avoiding so. us, Rikita. Me too. I, I know. know. Well, what's, I'm... what's your problem with the open bar, Nick? My problem's <laughs> not with the open bar; it's with the United Kingdom. We're all a problem with an entire kingdom. The way too much monarchal representation on this panel. I am very Thanks. offended. I am you one of the 74%, Nick. <laughs> is that what you're saying? 1776 hey. is brewing, baby. Hey, Disney <laughs> wrote The Little Mermaid to be anti-monarchy. So. Dur during, during the coronation, that was like the one time in the UK where you could fly the Union Jack and not be accused of being a racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, was like, that was the only time. Prove yeah, freedom. Like, don't they just fly the Somali flag there now, or? <laughs> we, we just, uh, yeah. When, um, we, when the well, king yeah. of Saudi Arabia it died, we flew our flag over. at half-mast for the king oh. of Saudi Arabia. Although, in Saudi Arabia, you're actually not allowed to demonstrate public sort of displays of mourning for departed monarchs because it's deemed to be blasphemous. So we accidentally blasphemed the country of Saudi Arabia <laughs> in paying obeisance to our oil baron overlords. <laughs> Mistakenly <Wow>. based. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, well, congrats on the uh, on the fiftieth show, Drinker. Thanks. Thank you. That's we, amazing. We worked hard at this. We 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 yeah. We showed up Tuned week up, after we week, and drinks. suddenly we're here. Fifty. Yeah. It's awesome. And uh, like I don't know. I'm I'm sure the audience does know, but it's it's amazing how much. Like I was sitting backstage listening to uh robert here talk about star trek and all this stuff and i'm like, sorry all... no 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 no. <laughs> apology accepted but not needed um just listening to like all of the knowledge and expertise that comes through this show about these different properties about the process of writing and creation it's it's crazy like how much is delivered through a through a youtube show with you know some that starts with the premise of a couple people drinking together it's awesome i love it yeah no, I, well, that, that's the great thing about it is like we can bring in people from all different like ends of the spectrum and, uh, you know, everyone brings their own area of expertise to things. And I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like it's exactly how it is in a bar. You might you never quite know who you're going to run into <laughs> and what, what kind of expertise right. they're going to have in life. You know, so that's uh, well, yeah, that's there, nice. there was that weird uh, news story the other day where um, Green Day happened to be at a bar, like just some random pub. And there was a Green Day cover band playing. And so Billy Joel like got up and went, or Billy Joe, not Joel, uh, went up and, and like sang with them. And they're like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, you never know who's there, man. It's uh... One day we're going to be talking about Star Trek and fucking like Patrick Stewart or William Shatner or something is just going to show up and start talking Chat, to us. Like, you know? yeah, actually. Yeah, that would be cool. As long as it isn't stupid Wesley. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. He's traveling he, through he time now. Yeah. Okay, he so pops in the Mother's chat. Day, I went to the, or the day before Mother's Day, I went to the bookstore because my mom likes to read. So I was trying to find a book that she hasn't read. And there's a big sales section. And I guess Wesley wrote a book all about himself. And that was covering the entire table. <laughs> Not a single copy sold. <laughs> Not a single copy. Like I, 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 was the bargain bin table. Yeah. I think you're the only person on this panel that's got a reaction out of Shatner online because, like, he he responded yeah. to one of your tweets, didn't he? He's responded to a few of my tweets, but I did. Ah, uh, you and him are tight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So funny story. I was at a con, and so. I me and Cecil were waiting to take a picture with William Shatner and Cecil's picture William Shatner's like Ugh. and in my picture he actually smiled and so I was like yes he smiled for my picture and then the next day I completely embarrassed myself because I went to go have him sign it and then I'd, I'm not good in front of celebrities so I kind of froze up and I'm like oh my god I know you're not Captain Kirk but this is Captain Kirk and then Cecil's like she's such a big Star Trek fan and I was like you're my hero and he's like oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. I that like I, when I met him myself, like that the one of the few times I've been genuinely starstruck because um, I in my head I was gonna do this um, like 
amazing tear jerking speech to him and like yeah you, know, <laughs> you know you were my hero growing up and all that stuff and he'd be like i want to shake your hand you son of a bitch you know, amazing <laughs> and then we'd hug and stuff and then go out for a beer afterwards but like in reality it was just like i really liked you as captain kirk <laughs> thanks and well, he's like yeah like, like, like okay you thank you. like a thousand times in one day and they're like yep Yep. yeah exactly yeah. It's like, i was super mad at some of my friends because they had him over for a podcast i'm like you fuckers you didn't invite me like and they're like you would have been too awkward and i was like ah. <laughs> for for a guy who's 90 years old right like he is incredibly like on it like he's I sharp get how old he, he is already like, jesus 90 yeah. the, doesn't really look like 90 right 92 no. he looks no. younger than like patrick stewart Speaking Thank of old guys, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Dial, of, Dial of Destiny is premiered. It's finished screening mm. at Cannes. Oh, that's a oh, we, we Yeah, we <laughs> were talking about this a little bit before. We're excited. Um, and, uh, yeah, we can't wait to see like elderly Harrison Ford getting his diaper changed. <laughs> being told how much he sucks yeah. over and over again. Can somebody yeah. explain I keep forgetting why? that that's the title of the movie. I, it sounds like an <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock film. The dial the of movie. Destiny. Yeah, I would watch that. I'd rather watch that. I would rather watch that. It'd probably be good. Give me more. I just, to yeah. because I know what I know what they're setting up here. I know they're setting up like a, a time travel back to World War Two, where we're going to see young Indy, and they're going to mess with the timeline. They're going to rewrite everything, and I just think, fuck no, just stop doing this. Just have a bit of respect for what came before. Oh. <laughs> Stop. Why would they do that? <laughs> Why would they do that? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I know, but like, why do you have to like pollute the past with all your bullshit? Money. Man? I can't what? wait till we find out the dial of destiny is actually the bar of soap that Indiana Jones dropped in prison where he turned gay. <laughs> <laughs> Dove soap, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I. Man, I have zero this... interest in it. Like I, I don't care about any reviving old properties. Is um is so dead and and so pathetic these days. Something has to be pure magic in the in the trailer, and I have to hear nothing from their marketing team directly, other than the trailer, to have a hint of a wiggle, uh, in the old pants. The only thing that even comes to mind lately was Top Gun, because they put Mission out that Impossible. trailer. Uh, oh yeah, the mission. But see, mm. Mission Impossible is that, really. That's not a throwback. That's just like yeah, a continuation. It's, just, go, it's yeah. just been going. And er, other than I think three, or it was either two or three. Two. I didn't like, but I like pretty much all of them. Two. Was um, yeah. But yeah, like Top Gun. They put the trailer out. It looked awesome. They didn't really say anything other than like, "Hey, we thought this is a movie the fans would want." And then I got it. I didn't want to hear anything else. And it was awesome. And it was just exactly what Top Gun Two should have been. But everything else that's like, you know what? I'm going to bring back this movie from 25 years ago. No. No, you no. shouldn't do that. Well, when you want to overbuy them playing the theme song that was, you know, a bunch of other super talented and passionate people created. Or like the characters that a bunch of other, you know, passionate people created and brought to life. That's starting to get really annoying in the trailers. Hey, you piano. remember this music? Yeah, yeah I do yeah, remember the music. Somber piano from music. Those, somber right, slow piano. Music, yes, I do remember. Trailers in general. Like, I see them as like, I don't care. Like as, you remember, yeah, everything's a half tempo minor key cover yeah. of an eighty song. Thank yep. you. Well, like a... Those two minute trailers, they feel like they're like half an hour long, and it's like I feel like I've seen the whole movie already. It feels like, uh, I, I don't know if it was you know what it, 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 but um, Jurassic World's trailer. Do you remember when that came out? And it was like do do do. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh! 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 You, you know what the, the the tone that it sets every single time is like. Remember this thing that you loved? Don't yeah. you feel well, sad? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, don't you feel sad for what <laughs> you're about to do to it? Because <laughs> like, that's it. it. Like it's a morning. It's like yeah. it, it's hmm. like sadness for what you're about the, to um, do. The Rise the of Skywalker back. trailers do that as well with Leia's theme for for the Rise of Skywalker. I'm sure one of the trailers used that in similarly like a, a somber 
It might not have been a piano version, but it was definitely a sombre version. Mm. And you can understand why, because Carrie Fisher had just passed away, but it was also the passing away of something much bigger than the actress. <laughs> Honestly, like, they could throw the fucking Teletubbies theme tune into, like, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, it meant fuck all anyway. Probably be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember. At least they'd have the right like, attitude. To- or, yeah. Like Thomas the Tank Engine or something. Like, yeah, fine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like why not? That <laughs> movie was the everything in the kitchen sink. And then Bullet Train, and that was pretty good. Yeah, I like, it was fun. I, yeah. Bullet Train was I, great. I really enjoyed Bullet it was Train. Fun just to watch. It's I mean, yeah. you guys, by the way, when they make the Thomas the Tank Engine live action film, that they're going to have the slow piano melody for the. Like runs over severely. Yeah, it'll fade. It'll like fade in, and then it will be like <laughs> one against the blue background. You know, Thomas will get he'll get hooked up. He'll get hooked up to a train cart full of fentanyl, and he'll get all like bags under his eyes, start looking haggard and running across tracks that'd be no, awesome you need, the, you need the opening line echoing where it's like i've always been on the tracks <laughs> <laughs> the it's about time we were no 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 it'd be like yeah the thomas said like <laughs> it's, my, it's, it's my last line. it's my last stand against the advance of the electric trains somehow the bad. electric trains came back yeah <laughs> here we go here we go uh, Your old news, you have Thomas. caused confusion and delay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Variety says, I don't know if you guys saw this already, the elaborate action scenes and witty one-liners delivered by Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Indiana uh-huh. Jones in the Dial of Destiny mostly received a muted response inside the theater Ooh. and the audience Audience members could be heard whispering out of boredom in French. Oh no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Rich. It was well, rich. it's the plot, but yeah, they're going back in time, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to be the one that does everything instead mm-hmm. of Indiana Jones. Not like the plot. Yeah. I'm picturing like the riot director sitting in the cinema with all the test audiences, like smiling and looking left, looking right, looking left, looking right. Be like, they're not, like, they're not laughing. I, yeah, they're not laughing. Like, what's happening? It was so clever what it did there. But it's they James Mangold, isn't it? Like, this is the guy yeah. who did Logan. He did so yeah. Ferrari, oh. and that film is really. Oh, oh I love that. Film. That's really good. I still so haven't like, watched yeah. that. I forgot about. But that I mean, movie. I guess this is something that we that seems to be the case with a lot of like big Disney productions lately. Is how much of this is just assembly line, where the director mm, comes in yeah. and they don't really have that much of a say over what's happening. Yeah, I, I think you're, I yeah, you're very right. In this case, like uh, the the mandate has almost certainly come from above. It's like, well, it has to. I, satisfy x y and z criteria and I those criteria are almost day. certainly going to be like get rid of Indy, <laughs> replace him with someone younger and yeah. you know uh well they they want to keep it as a franchise surely yeah. right oh, like yeah. what is uh because they tried willow that failed so now it's destroyed you know, star wars, star wars and, <laughs> yeah right so indiana jones you know well they already have the setup with the last movie with Shia LaBeouf. So why didn't they just do another movie? Oh, with Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf is nuts. Did you guys remember the Shia Ezra LaBeouf song? Miller that was still a gets movies. Banger, For some reason, oh, yeah. the flash isn't canceled. Actual Ezra Miller's kind of crazy is okay. But Eating Shia all the bodies, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ezra Miller not. actually deserves to be canceled, but well, Shia we, LaBeouf, we talked... of course, is radioactive waste now. I know. <laughs> We we talked about earlier though, like wouldn't it be fantastic if you had like a, a movie with Indy and Short Round from uh, from Temple of Doom? Great, yes. yeah. Reunite those two actors, like let them just play off each other. Um, great, great fun. But instead, you have to bring in like Phoebe Waller Bridge, who's never been mentioned before, like completely new character. But we're suddenly going to pretend that like she's got this like well deserved history and heritage uh, as part of the series. And of course, she's a worthy successor to Indy. And we and will sure all immediately know who she is, ever. because because uh, Indy all goes around telling absolutely every single person he meets that this is his goddaughter. By the oh, way, God I'll daughter. have one for my goddaughter, please. Have you met my goddaughter? This is my goddaughter. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know if you've ever like. I'm sure everyone here has been in a bar and ordered a round of drinks, and I would never say like, "Hey, I'll have a pint and one for oh, my goddaughter." God. <laughs> <laughs> like. All the time. What are you talking about? Religion, so why no, would but they I've ordered one enough? for your goddaughter, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have one that I know of, but like maybe I do. 
<laughs> Ricky was like, wait, who did I order a drink for? <laughs> <laughs> she said she was your goddaughter. I don't know. Getting that clout, I guess. Clearly, I, did, I didn't uh, do, a, do a good job of protecting her like I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that'd be the awesome ending, right? Phoebe Waller-Bridge ends up in the Stone Crusher as a throwback to Temple of Doom, and that's why we've never heard of her, because it's so traumatized Indy that he never spoke of her again. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of, like, you want it to be so farcical that she, like, has a whole speech about how horrible he is, and you just, you just gets to punch her with that classic sound. <laughs> oh, you know <laughs> How many Absolute times absurdity. It's, it's the scene in um, is it Temple of Doom where the, the guy who's waving the sword around and he just shoots him? Yeah, right. Right. Replace, <laughs> replace the sword waving with like a lecture yeah, on intersectional raiders. feminism. Capitalistic grave robbing monster that only yeah. ever cared about itself. <laughs> Boom! Like, folks yeah. are wasn't I'll he just exploiting scene, indigenous yeah. peoples? And he just goes like, <laughs> <laughs> folks, I will come back. I, I've been summoned. I must go take care of something. But I will come oh, back. Okay. <laughs> no problem. By the way, variety. Terrible, not good review. It's not mm. good. Not good. If Variety doesn't give it a good review, yeah. that's ooh. yeah. That's a bad thing. We're gonna have fun then. Nice. But I'll be back. <laughs> All right, cool man. It's twenty thirty seven. The dirty diesels have ruined the environment, and now <laughs> Thomas the Green Engine has to come back with electric power and save the climate. <laughs> I'm still stuck on Thomas Gritty remake. I'm like I retro in my life. Dude, I, I, I could legit easy. categorize so like the whole of humanity into Thomas characters. It's like you're a Percy, you're a Gordon, you're a Diesel, you motherfucker. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh man, that's an easy I, I, fucking parody trailer though, because you could just look at actual trailers that are coming out and just steal their lines. It's like, yeah, your old nose, Thomas. It's moved on. You're a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I have not. My ways have not been. No, yet. no. He, he would say. He would say. Maybe fat controller. But not today. The next Dove advert. The, the, yeah, you can see the trailer. Like where it would just be like flash cuts of like steam billowing out of a funnel and like someone shoveling coal into a boiler or something. Like, <laughs> the, yeah, like but pistons have pumping. They'd have like, to wipe off the coal shoveler's face every four minutes to not, you know, offend anybody. It's like he's getting too dark. Like, oh, we got the towel right. boy. They're like, we don't want blackface in this. That'd be bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, they all have like just use white coal instead. <laughs> yeah. No, over here they did accuse that of Mary Poppins. They said this is a film full of blackface. It's like, no, you don't understand what the movie's about. <laughs> you should have yeah. just shoved one of those idiots down a down a tri uh, a chimney. Like, here's what you look like when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to give Thomas his goddaughter train, and she needs to talk about how he's been polluting the environment yes. his whole life. <laughs> yeah, and really one of the plot anything. points... Repent. One of the plot points needs to be about how Thomas is confused why his friend, who was always a diesel his entire life, has now chosen to transition to an electric vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I identify as an electric train, and so I am. <laughs> But you just see him like like going along the line, like spewing out diesel fumes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> nah, but he's electric. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, you could definitely do that with this. You spent a whole stream um, making up shit like this. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing with game mods. One of the first mods to come into existence is always everyone's Thomas the Tank Engine. I don't know why it always is. Well, it was like <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah, they, 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 replaced the, they replaced the dragon with a Thomas yeah. the Tank yeah. Engine. Yeah. Like, every time. Fucking the stuff of every nightmares. Every time the model. And every time they crash into every... onto the scene, just playing his fucking theme is always yeah, like, exactly. so funny. <laughs> you hear that? They do that with the, with the tank and left for that too. Like the music yeah. starts playing and then the tank crashes. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually legitimately one of the better jokes of the whole MCU when the tank engine crashed through the house, Thomas, you know, because they yep. expanded yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> credit where it's due, it's probably Edgar Wright that made that happen, but who knows, you know, I don't want to say. It's not impossible. They got worse as they went along, those Ant-Man movies. They what? definitely that did. Definitely true, yeah. <laughs> they definitely did. They're perfect. Mm -hmm. I did not see the most recent one because oh, every don't. time I, yeah, every time I think of a Marvel movie these days, it just gets. You sad. missed out on Murdoch. Yeah, man. Oh, no. Look, though, yeah. Yeah. Socialist ants. It's uh, coming to Disney. Don't, don't worry, don't Disney worry Nick. It's never too late to stop being a dick. Missed out on how they mutilated the Greatest line in the MCU. 
Oh my God. There's hope for me yet. Thank God. Oh. Yeah. Let's do a couple of super chats while we're we're waiting for Robert to come back. Oh, before a drink, I, I wasn't to talk to Chris Jericho. I was very jealous. You got to talk to him. He's my favorite wrestler. <laughs> he was uh, he was a really nice guy to talk to. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's it's funny because I wasn't trying to like get a gotcha or anything like that because I just wanted to have a, a bit of banter with him. But like, I was yeah. interested to hear his thoughts on like WCW and think, you know, thinking like, ah, oh, you know. <laughs> He might have oh. had some bad experiences there, but like he was not going to say a bad word about like any of those guys. So yeah, yeah, fair play. Oh, that's nothing he hasn't talked about before. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of his interviews and podcasts and stuff. I mean, you you were nice. You were very nice. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I, 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 I was trying to get a feel for like where he was at, like because like yeah, I literally yeah. had two minutes to get to know him before we went live, and it was like okay, like yeah, let's, but he's, uh, he's let's a, go do this. I bet he's very busy. <laughs> He is, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, but that he was, was cool to see. That was cool. He, he was, uh, he was a good guy, and like, yeah, damn man. Like, I had nothing but respect for guys like him. Where it's like, yeah, you're kind of taking your life in your hands every time you go in a ring, and you've done it for like the past thirty years, and you're you're not dead, and you're not crippled. Dude, he, so yeah, it's insane. Well. He can still go at his age. Like, this is nuts. He he just uh, moved his in ring style to something he can still do today. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know how you did it. He's like 52 now, I think. I was like, you're still doing backflips. I, I yep. was never able to do one, and you do it <laughs> on the ropes at 50. I don't get it, but enough Jack Daniels and Drinker will do it for us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They yeah, just see the fact that I'm not wearing any pants. So, like, what, what can I do? <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, anyway, let me do a couple of super chats here as we go. So, um, Mr. Lucas says, "Congrats, mate! You deserve all of this." Favorite Star Wars character? Oh gosh, Ooh. this is for the whole panel. So, like, um, favorite Star Wars character? Clockwise, and then end with Drinker, something like that. Yeah, sure, okay. Well, let's I guess start, start with... with old platoon then. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wait, no, no, wait, no, 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 no. We start with you, surely, if we're going clockwise. Uh, I believe clock start at twelve. That's yeah, really start at twelve. So Mauer's going to be last, part of ah, me. Ah. So, uh... Oh shit, we're not going dealers left. Oh bugger. Um, <clears throat> shit, favorite. I don't know. Like the one I always really wanted to be way better than he really was was Count Dooku, just because there's a lot of potential with that character they didn't really tap. Um, but given also he's played by Christopher Lee, who is just brilliant um well the voice anyway uh i'll, I'll go with him because it's a bit left field but there are better characters mm. who's okay. gonna take vader i wonder that was me mine's <laughs> <laughs> well baggage claim first yeah vader <laughs> you're mu muted, muted. You're muted. Sorry, sorry, sorry. uh i would say luke skywalker just classic hero just perfect okay yeah all right easy easy peasy anna easy. darth vader Gonna say explain why? Your reasoning. <laughs> yeah, why? explain your reasoning. Uh, I like stories where it kind of throws you through a curve, and I mean, he's when I was little watching it, I watched it because Princess Leia was in it because I love princesses. But I was like, he's so cool, and then just like the depth to his character, and at the end, even though he's done all these bad things in Return of the Jedi, when he's talking to Luke before he takes Luke up to the Death Star, and Luke's like, I know, like you're not gonna do it, and then he says, it's too late for me, son. I'm like. <gasps> Oh my heart! He knows, like, since <laughs> everything he's done is bad, and then you know, but it's too late for him. And then he, he does save his son, and I'm, you know, he's dying, but he's like, I just want to see my son. I'm like, oh my god! So, yeah, solid. All right, nice. Uh, Nick, you're looking cool as fuck right now. So, thank yeah, you, nail <laughs> thank it. you. Hide your dogs. ATF is here. Uh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say Baru's smoking corpse as a joke, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's actually a Wado. You know, Wado, the most honestly racist character. <laughs> <laughs> An honest dealing man works by contract, but gets uh, cheated by the Jedi with the cheating dice. God damn, it's actually really good. <laughs> that, is a, that is a pretty fucking spot on. Say, like, if, well done, if they make. If they make Watto a Star Wars story, we should hire Rakita to do the voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Well All right, Friggy. Uh, Yoda. He's 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 a cool he's a cool guy. Um, and it's not just because he's green. It's because he's uh got it's like it's cool that it's cool that like this super powerful and wise uh force user can be this little green guy, this funny guy in a little swamp in Dagobah. I like what that represents about the force nice 
No, I, I can't can't argue with that one. Uh, Knock metal. out all the main guys and watch yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I always liked Vader too before the the Obi Wan show when he was. Yeah. Like, he was badass, menacing. I was like, I don't want to fuck with that mm. guy. He didn't He's... get stopped by like just a little row of fire. Like, oh no, just... fire that it just made vanish, and now it's uh. whatever it was. Uh, yeah, just pure badassness, pretty much. It's just fucking cool. All right, disparate. Everyone's doing movies. Um, I'm assuming I can do the games as well. Like you're doing Star no, Wars Universe and it. No, <laughs> movies. Oh, oh come on. Mm -hmm. Get out. I mean, mo movies would probably Wait, be... Are you gonna say Get out, you fucking dork. <laughs> no, if, if, it was, if, it was if it was games, it'd be Kraya. Because I like the oh. whole... Cheat the, the sort of the midway, she was like, well, actually, it's not either. Uh, like, the, the, the entire bad. way she played that character, I thought was awesome. She, also, she movies, told me um, never to give money to homeless people. That's one of Kraya's most well, important lessons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Kraya, it was like either money, way it destroyed you give his money life. To, you give money to this homeless guy and mm. Kraya turns up and says, are you, basically, are you sure that was a good thing to do? And you think, well, yeah, I'm, I'm being charitable. And then the camera pans away and you see the guy get shivved by another homeless man. And so Kraya, <laughs> <laughs> Kraya yeah. says, well, that's what you get. So now, yeah, don't be charitable. Charitable is, um, is bad, according to Kraya. So, oh, I mean, the money well, still like... went to a homeless man. So, yeah. so I, 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 I like characters that play with sort of standard like morality so it, it's like everyone thinks mm. that this is a good act but it's like well actually if you've thought about all of the consequences of your actions and Craig did kind of did that everyone else is yeah. like well this is black and white she's like well there is this have you thought about this um and so like that but if it had to be the movies it'd probably be it'd probably be obi-wan i mean i do realize you have to include the most recent series in that if i did <laughs> did that but it, it, before that let's it's just like, pretend it doesn't exist yeah yeah i mean w without that i think it's really good that you, you've got this kid that you've raised and then he's literally like the destruction of everything can you imagine your life it's like if you hadn't existed and raised this character the world would have been a better place um and so i like the kind of the darkness mm. of that nice All well right. it's just me then i suppose what um <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> what is racism? Like, I, just, oh, I couldn't believe it. If you'd asked me like uh, three or four years ago, I might have said Boba Fett just because he was so mysterious, so interesting, just such a cool character. Like, I wanted to know more about him, but I simultaneously didn't want to know more about him. Like, I think the fact that he was so unknown just made him like very mm. compelling. Um, but I'll tell you, my my one of my favorite characters from the OT was Wedge Antilles. And I just liked him because he was a solid guy. He he didn't have any spectacular um, plot points or anything. He didn't have like some incredible hero moments. He was just a fucking good pilot who did his job and absolutely nailed it every time. And I, I respect him for that. So I like Wedge. Like he was my favorite character. So that is my choice. And there we go. Everybody's answers are done. <laughs> <laughs> for like a for like a two dollar super chat or whatever that was, like you did pretty fucking well. <laughs> he legit doesn't know, by the way. No, I don't. Yeah. Think Wait, it, Mahler, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Sorry. Finally, we got through. It's, it. like, it's well, weird. It's like I got to Disparu and like, oh, clearly it has to go right. Wait, was that not deliberate? <laughs> I, I thought no, it wasn't. <laughs> I, I thought oh, you were still. Yeah, I thought it was a bit. I sort of forgot you existed. <laughs> That's okay. I've only been here fifty times. That's it. I mean, yeah, the the moment you took over, he he commented on it. <laughs> you just kept going. Wait, Moller, what is your favorite character of Star well, Wars? If I'm restricted to the movies, then I have to go to the most inspirational, heroic, and legendary. I, I'm, I'm assuming he's a lieutenant, Porkins. He oh, yes. really came in. Porkins he knew was what great. Job yeah. needed to be done, and he <laughs> fucking did it. And yes, he went down. But he'll always be remembered through the Porkins belly run, a resistance flight <laughs> maneuver named in his Ooh. honor. You can check that on the Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> but no. Um, do we have to? I was going to say Luthen to be different, but. Um, I guess if we're doing movies, I'm going to have to go with Vader. I'm sorry. I, I think no, the it's... question said Star Wars, which includes everything. Oh, oh, I guess you did say, yeah, you went with things. So fuck it. Yeah, I can go with Luthen. Screw you, drinker. You can't stop me. I'm a maverick yeah, now. Correct. What well, a, I what can, a, everyone I would this choose stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> what a legendary idea a for a character. Weapon. 
a person who is fully aware that he's destroyed his entire life in order to make a better life for other people, who's ruthless, will kill people in an instant, sacrifice friendships, even leverage he has in the overall political fight for the goal of ultimately bringing down the Empire. Can't wait to see how his story will end in season two of Andor. Mm -hmm. Not sponsored by Andor this stream, nope. Not nobody, uh, nobody picked Han. No. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Which is yeah. surprising. He hangs around with a furry. Don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We've got Mulwa here. Hours with a furry. You gotta remember that. Nobody Maybe. picked Leia either, yeah, which is also surprising. Love Mahler, but I don't trust him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're a lawyer, so. <laughs> we all have Do you demons. even have blood? I'm always <laughs> washing my back around him. I, 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 I want to say it's like trust <laughs> other people's blood. I love, how, <laughs> I love how little platoon's got sunglasses on now. How can you do that with your avatar? Uh, for some reason, I have weird thing. I have a monocle as well if I want to be incredibly partial. Ooh, but, oh, that's oh nice. nice. Yeah, that, that's twos. There's loads of other stuff, but I don't know what the buttons do, so I, I don't press them just in case you I have a cigar. <laughs> you got a little cigarette there, but do you have a cigar? Is, I don't. No, I just oh. have the cigarette, annoyingly. I can move oh, the hand, well, but I don't yeah. actually know how that works either. Yeah, I, I just avoid the buttons because something will go terribly wrong. It's like you have a giant dick coming out your forehead. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no! I have a special. One of them does a dramatic face reveal. I have yeah. a special. This is an incredibly bad take I've just heard thing. So that's also kind of yeah. Um, <laughs> and there are some others. There's like the surprise shit. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drinker, I'm gonna join Damn you. It, I've I have got, to do uh, this with my actual face. <laughs> I've got some uh, Duncan Taylor from Burke Laddie here. So Brooke enjoy. Laddie. Brooke, Brooke Laddie. Laddie, sorry. I yeah. I Americanized it. My bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, that's a, that's a pretty that's, good whiskey. Yeah. What you got I'm a big there? Fan. Chivas Regal. Chivas Regal. Oh, that's a blast from the past. God damn. I feel like Is I'm it? living in the eighties again. Nice one, man. <laughs> yeah, I got that mm. gifted for my birthday a while ago. Cheers. It's almost it's almost empty. Mostly because well, of the last open bars I was on. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers to everyone. I, I appreciate this. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm. I'm definitely not going to be able to read the super chats by the end of this. Work tomorrow, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mitch says, "Have you considered turning these into podcast episodes? Uh, so many of us would like to listen on the go and would really appreciate it." Um, yeah. I mean, good point. Actually, um, I, I guess you can always like. Just listen to them on YouTube anyway. If you're you're doing your thing, um, you don't have to watch it. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I could put it on Spotify or something like that. Um, it's, well, it's a new YouTube feature as well. You can just add them to a podcast playlist mm -hmm. and YouTube. Well, it for you. How do you get auto categorized as well? Like when when I re-upload them to my second channel, they just go up as podcasts. Like it knows what oh. they are already. Mm -hmm. uh, I just reckon that YouTube should have an option to you know like quality options, but just only audio. Don't. You know, yeah. Don't display. Well, I thought that's what the podcast. Well, that's part of a. Uh, isn't that like a YouTube Premium thing? Yeah, right? I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. No no premium. premium. Would, uh, well, yeah, but why would do they want to do that for free? You know, I was going to yeah, say, totally nice right. they did that for free. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, they can get we ten do. bucks a month out of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> we can do this for mean, free. Or, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, what we do here, like ninety nine percent of the time, like you don't have to see it. Wow, <laughs> Jesus, what, what is happening? <laughs> I think I'm about to get hit by a train. What the fuck was that? Oh, but he's got a oh, no. no. <laughs> Thomas is revenge. It's just San Francisco sounds, you guys. That's all. Oh no, the, the steam team are on us. I just was looking at anyone's camera. It's like somewhere is going to car come crashing in right now. <laughs> I did hear a bunch of heroin needles breaking before the, the horn sound. Yeah, just, you know, uh, all in a day in SF. Yeah, uh, Baker Boy says, just so Guardians of the Galaxy 3, I think even in another world where Gunn gets a few more films, it'd still be mediocre. More magic, nanotech, BS, medkits, etc. That guy's right. Uh, mm, yeah, yep. I'm tired of the nanotech helmets. I'm sick yep. of it. Yeah, they had these same. intentionally designed, cool looking helmets from the comics, but then they got rid oh. of them. Because well, remember, like, Albert, give me it back. This, this spills over into everything. Remember when Iron Man had to get suited up and it was like quite a lengthy process? And yeah. you could see all the gears and all his, the. 
in this workshop that was great. of all the big uh, machines. It's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. I fucking love that. Cool. Now it's just like this like wearable nanotech like suit that just like morphs over. I don't know where, like, where they fucked up because everyone talked about the briefcase suit from Iron Man Two, the suit grabbing him in Avengers, the suits being called to him in Iron Man Three. It's like this was stuff people really liked. Why? Why is everyone fucking it's nanotech? Simply, it is simply to give the actors more face time. Like, that, no. I think that's all what they it can is. go like. Well, the funny thing is about that is that the most iconic, like, covered-up person and the one that we're referencing is, like, the face of the MCU, even though he's gone now and he was wearing a suit a lot of the time. Yeah. I know that you we looked inside it, you know, <coughs> the Iron Man visor screen, but fucking loads oh, of his screen time had the Iron Man mask on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then Spider-Man, you know, too. You know, Spider-Man is fully... Yeah. And well, you would think also that actors that aren't in the prime of their life, like Robert Downey Jr., who's in his 50s, he would probably prefer not actually being in it and I, just being the face cam, because, I mean, that's a lot on someone. I mean, to, like, to, to be fair, about. Robert Downey Jr. looks like he's in his late 70s at this point. Oh, it's <laughs> awful. He, he's had a tough, <laughs> a tough paper round. Yeah. That's what veganism Correct. will do to a man. Do you not look good in Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> I, I would never watch Like, well, no one saw that. Why would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, what shall I do after our end game? This iconic role I played. Ah, oh, Doolittle. Yeah. Well, now he's doing great. a. Uh, he's doing a car show, well, right? He did that. Well, because yeah. He has a young I don't know if that's a step he's down or a step up from Doolittle. I mean, he's in. He's in Oppenheimer, so you'd have to. Everybody's in Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. He's. He's an Oppenheimer. Is he playing one of the people that sat too close to the explosion? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when the radiation does hit. Playing a ghoul. <laughs> he just looks so wasted away. Like it's so. Yeah. It's, it, it, you know, if this is what veganism does to you, like, yeah, don't you sign know, me up. You know, I veganism's guess. bad when your friends are giving you meth so you gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of am like hesitant to say anything just because he could actually be sick, like Chadwick Boseman, you know, and he's just covering Mm -hmm. it up. I mean, like, yeah, like, if, like, I guess let's put the disclaimer in there. So if if Robert Downey Jr. is suffering from some genuine terminal disease, I'm so sorry, Robert. No, no, no. it's better to take the piss and then apologize than never to take the piss. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I just, <laughs> at least well, I, I made the I, joke I, at the right time. I, I don't think he is. I think it's just legit. You're you're on a horrible fucking diet that's slowly killing you. Please. Arguably, ve- veganism is arguably a terrible disease, so we, we shouldn't mark that. But otherwise, right. no, it's. I mean, how else are we going to cure it? Some, well, somebody I... else, somebody please get this man a cheeseburger. I don't know. Just <laughs> I'll see like a celebrity and I'm like, oh my God, they look terrible. And then like the next month they're dead. So I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So I'm like, ah, the curse. I agree. Did you, see that video that, then? did you see that video that was doing the rounds on Twitter just today? And it was like a morbidly obese woman trying to get like, oh, uh, uh, like into a seat on a uh, like a standard airline seat. I saw that yesterday. Down the um, <laughs> and it's like, why? Why do airlines oh. make their aisles so slim or like so narrow? And it's like, no, they're not narrow. Like normal people, they're fine. Like you're just enormous. It's, it's, it's Even like, for my... better people, it's fine. But when your ass is this big, I'm what sorry. I don't know what you want me. To she do. turned sideways and got bigger. Like, it, was wide. it was like shoving a dinner roll through a garden hose. It was, so, it was like. <laughs> There's this one girl on like Instagram and TikTok. And so her entire thing is about how she's super, super fat and how you make it work on airplanes. And I'm like, there is a solution. You Mm. buy either two seats or a first class seat, or I don't know, crazy lose weight and work out and take care of yourself. But that's mostly looking after yourself. Did you, were you, Anna, were you on the show where we went through the, the, the fat chick, the fat Instagram chick Which who caught one? the guy next to her making fun of her on text no. messages. Oh my god. So this oh guy god. is this video. I have to find it. This guy is dropping like the hottest fat jokes to whoever he's talking <laughs> to on text messages. And she like pans her camera over and catches him and then confronts him at the end of the flight. Mm. And she's like, she's like, that was really rude. And he's like, look, I'm sorry, you know, whatever. And and then she's she says one of his jokes back to him and he bursts out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'll right. find it. God, it was so funny. Also, <laughs> back of him is just to sit on him, right? Yeah. Just crush him. Just job of the head it. She was already Have you guys like heard half of in a seat. Oh, she's in... oh, yeah. Gorlock on the whatever podcast. Oh, yeah. look, the destroyer. Yeah. yeah. Gorlock is no I see Gorlock all over my timeline with a new video. Oh, it's great. She is, yeah, she is really running that fame. You know what? No, it's good for you. It's entertaining yeah. to me. But it's funny. I like the I crying Uber podcast. video. You get four oh. hours in when she reveals that she's trans and everyone is shocked. They're like, what? Really? Because the, the voice is actually pretty feminine compared to some. And she's so yeah. big that she's gotten into fat levels of androgyny. Like, yeah. I was going to say, like, when you get to a certain size, like, anything, I guess, is possible. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. well, like, I, I didn't have a Only prediction, so I'm not surprised by the outcome. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I just thought you were just while, while, while Nick's, while Nick's uh, looking there, I'll do a couple more Super Chats. Um, oh, shit. I'm supposed uh, to find this now. Let me do it. Yeah. Well, you can Philip S. says, it, it'll be a 24-hour podcast, right? Right? Uh, mm -hmm. No, this I, is I not tried, EFAP. We, we don't do twin, him, but, you know, what can I do? Look. Like, can you imagine me working my way through this for 24 hours? Like, I, I don't can't. know. Man. Yes, so that's actually. I want to see it. I think people would really enjoy that. Yeah. I think by the end of <laughs> like, You can't like, leave yeah. until it's finished. <laughs> I'm like, please kill me. <laughs> I think it would have taken chat's care chat's like. That They'd enjoy that even that more. Long. Yeah, they probably would, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sl my life is slowly unraveling in front of your eyes. Like, yeah, just enjoy it. <laughs> I start taking bets. And then we yeah. can, like, just ride up. start rocking back and forth in the night, <laughs> waiting for death. <laughs> yeah. I wanna, I, one day I'm going to vomit live on stream. That will be my, my crown of glory. <laughs> that's actually banned on Twitch. You can't do that. <laughs> like, that's up to the Yeah, it's like a rule like, for it. Yeah, yeah they call even it if uh, it's, Even if it's unplanned. It's like, self, yeah, yes, it's, yes. It's considered it self harm. Mean to do it. Self harm or dangerous behavior. Uh, oh, yeah, I dropped. To... <laughs> I dropped the big chick in the uh, in the private chat there. So anyone I who like wants the, uh... to look at it or if we want to pull it up, we certainly can. It's like a three minute video. God, that's a sentence. I dropped a fat chick in the chat. Like... <laughs> 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 you guys fat chicks are much left to chat. You notice it <laughs> dented and there was a groaning, but. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna see if I can like uh, bring it up this way actually. Yeah, once you're done with that, Drinker, we can start writing up your uh, the reboot for you, the trailer. We'll bring, play some piano music and you can be like, Drinker, yeah. All my life I've been drinking, but I can't drink anymore. I'm, I'm actually sitting right next to a piano. We could do this, but oh, we, I, we, I, we really shouldn't. I need, I need a strong, empowered woman to show me how to drink. <laughs> we, need to start with an, we need an out of tune E sharp immediately. <laughs> I need to oh, wish you Scottish lassie. Uh, well, it's just like the trailer is the light piano, but it's all like shit because whoever's playing it is drunk. <laughs> yeah. It's just like their uh, it's like their head uh, resting on the point. keys, like <laughs> <laughs> because God daughter, like drinking's bad for you. And you're like, damn it, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you tell me what I can do. <laughs> uh, next, next question is from a Dougie. Anymore? Yeah, Dougie Schmidt, who says, uh, who else is jacked as fuck uh, to see the uh, Mission Impossible 7? Oh, yeah. I, I am. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was pretty good. That. Yeah. 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 That's good. Tom Cruise is legitimately my favorite actor of all time. Like, I, every time yep. I go back, I'm like, who do I consistently like damn near hmm. everything he's ever done and will ever be in? And it's Tom fucking Cruise. Like, the most under, I think he's the most underrated and underappreciated actor that has ever lived. Well, I think and, when you see a Tom Cruise movie now, it's like a little slice of 15 years ago when the yeah. world was like nicer and more optimistic and yeah. stuff. It's just like, oh yeah, oh, I remember. You just see a, very a trailer, reliable it's like, oh, this is this is going to be fun. If nothing yes. else, this is going to be fun and entertaining. And the interesting thing that's... about the trailer is that that dive off that cliff, they could very easily have CGI'd that. But oh, yeah. you yeah. knowing that they actually did that means a lot more than just thinking, so oh, cool. it's just a green screen. Yeah, they make promotion yeah, material out of it. Like, Hey, look at this shit, film. what we did. They should. All films should be fucking doing that. Because, yeah, I wouldn't yes. have said he's my favorite or even the best, but he's one of the most, if not the most, reliable actors in history. He's, he oh, gives sure. the performance you're looking for every time you go into one of his movies. Yep. yep. 
Um, and then you watch Tropic Thunder, and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't random. even realize it's him. I, until yeah, everybody, really look. I, I think I, my, my goes, favorite oh, moment shit. of that is, like, him, him, like, screaming at the guys on the phone, like, I will fuck you up, I will go thermonuclear <laughs> yeah. on you! And then he hangs up, and he just goes, would you find out who those people are, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, even know who they are. But it's like it's movie. probably my favorite Tom Cruise performance. It's so it's, fucking yeah. funny. But you and even get to him off the camera. Perfect. Hmm. Like he was renowned that his bookers and everything had to uh, put in extra time when they went to premieres because he just stayed outside shaking people's hands for no yeah. reason, and they hated him doing it. But he just wouldn't stop. And then well, um, even with people star. that work for him, the there was guy. the Edge of Tomorrow. Apparently, in the in the scene where they're all in the that suits and the hangar. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great, so it's an cool. incredible movie. Um, but apparently, it's like really hot. They're all there sweating. Everybody hated it. And the, she said, "The only time I ever saw him break is everyone's losing their minds." And it's, it's just, oh, it's tough. And that's like the, the only time he hasn't been like incredibly happy on a scene kind of thing. Um, Dude, and, he just seems like a nice bloke. Well, I mean, in Oblivion, yeah, like, Oblivion is an underrated movie in my opinion. That movie's yeah. so fucking cool. And those drones, when that thing first arrives, it's so goddamn terrifying. It's like wow. I, like I actually sat there in the theater and went, "Whoa, oh okay, shit, that thing, it moves weird, it sounds weird, and uh, it's menacing as shit." I love that movie. I like it until well, the end, and then yeah. the end becomes a bit too sort of generic sci-fi. But it's I mean, it's beautifully shot. The sound score, the score as well, is good. Is it M eighty three who did the score for that, which was kind of innovative and electronic? Um, and yeah, it, it, I mm -hmm. I think it's an underrated film. It's yeah, it just goes a bit too sort of knock off two thousand and one slash destroy the yeah. evil bad spaceship to deactivate the droids. Yeah, yeah. I'll agree I, with I you. Think if I was to pick on the end, that that sort of like yeah. Tom Cruise era, I would definitely pick Edge of Tomorrow over uh, Oblivion. Yeah. But yes, like, I would too. Both, both, go, both good yes. movies. Um, I, I just love uh, that that um, intro that he did for Top Gun Maverick, where it was just him just sitting there saying like, "Hey, I know it's been a tough time at cinemas and stuff, and like with the pandemic and everything, but like we're really pleased that you took the time to come out and watch this movie. Hope you enjoy it. We really appreciate it." That was it. Imagine no, just saying no political lecturing. Bands. No posturing, mm. none of that yep. bullshit, like fake, insincere crap that we're so used to from actors. Yeah, it was just, you know, I appreciate you coming to see my movie. Hope you like it. That was it. That. And that's when I knew it was. Meant I knew so it would be much. good. Yep. And there was that marketing when he jumped out the helicopter. I think it was for Mission Impossible. He jumped out the helicopter. Yeah, and he's just yeah. There, like resting, and he's so <laughs> casual about it. And the entire time, I'm listening to him, but I'm thinking, Are you gonna pull your parachute? Like. Are you no. really going to pull your parachutes at any point? <laughs> and he's, just, he's done it so often. He's so relaxed. And it's um, Nobody else does that because it's also fake and everything else. You're like, eh, okay. So yeah, it's time for the whole stop steroids for a bit. Him. Stop yeah. copying that. Don't copy shit like, oh, Spider-Man No Way Home was successful. I guess we need to just shove loads of cameos in. That's what yeah, <laughs> I'm learning. They take yeah. the wrong message from everything. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, well, don't you know that uh, Brie Larson is the next Tom Cruise? Yeah. Uh, but better. Uh, but she's better than Tom Cruise. Isn't she too tall to be Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> she can't, she's I mean, after her next... answer for Johnny Depp, I kind of like her a lot more. Like the fact that she that, didn't take yeah, the bait with that, I'm like, okay, fair enough. A lot of people would have just stitched him up. Well, and she could she Can could you... have gone with an answer of like women still need blah blah blah. blah. But yes, she, it was just like that. Yeah. That was what they wanted her to answer, and she actually yeah. went against the narrative they were trying to force her into. It, it, it makes me wonder then, like like so much of the crap that she's that's been pinned on her over the past few years, like was that her, or was it just her marketing team telling her to say these things? Mm. I, I don't know. Like, I, I would like to keep this. Uh, honestly, I would. I would genuinely keep this open mind of like maybe she she doesn't have any time for that garbage, but it's just like what she thought she had to say at the time to be popular. Like uh, what she says, I don't know. Do people want me back, or do they want me back? Like that came across super genuine. <laughs> she had no idea what's going on anymore. Yeah, like a uh, yeah. puppet with no strings sort of situation. Just like I'm fucking. I'm waiting for orders. Yeah. Um, I would, I would always, um, yeah. I guess I would always like to keep the option open for for any of these actors or, or celebrities or whatever who maybe done shitty things in the past or made like bad statements or whatever. The, the, there should be a way for them to come back. I agree. Um, it's just that yeah. not defending Amber Heard is about the lowest bar you could possibly clear. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, but many compared failed. to the rest of Hollywood, <laughs> that's an improvement. <laughs> it's like, Bree, do you think the Nazis were bad? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, you've cleared that hurdle. Good <laughs> like, sure. job. On to the I next mean, Variety's, Variety's entire Twitter feed for that day was trying to get people to um, hate... Uh, Johnny Depp. The in the entire day mm. was just. Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Oh, have you like he, he did this? He he turned. Did you hear? He turned up ninety minutes late and he made all the journalists wait. They were that desperate to try and get a story that was <laughs> anti Johnny Depp. Oh, it's astronomical. All of the journalists that have been talking shit about him for years. Oh, he made them wait. What a terrible person. Yeah. Yeah. How dare he? I know. Uh, DC7000 says, congrats, Moller and Drinker, on 50 open bars. Proud of you both. What yeah. are yours and the panel's thoughts on the 1970s thriller The Conversation, starring Gene Hackman? I haven't seen it. I wasn't oh, born. I'm... Oh, you can watch it. <laughs> That's a long show. Sorry. I've never uh, seen you it. You can Sorry. watch it, Moller. I think you would like it. Wow. I do like Gene Hackman. He's pretty badass. So. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen that. I, I haven't heard of it that I know of, like consciously heard of it. I'd love really? to. Really? So it's like I wasn't born. In on, a, on a conversation and stuff's going down. It, it's interesting. Why does everyone keep saying they weren't born? We've seen shit tons of shit before we were born. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of stuff that happened before I, know. Before I was there, born. There, there's <laughs> like, yeah, there's like the. the it's a the lot super... less likely. There's the super famous stuff that like you, you kind of have to watch if you're in any way interested in films, but then there's like the slightly more obscure stuff that it's like you, you kind of had to just be around at the time to really get it at the time. Look, I'm uh, I'm trying, but it's taking me a while to get through my Mesopotamian movie uh, list. So <laughs> yeah. you'll get there in the end. I'm Don't still worry. watching Cleopatra on Netflix. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, Keely I hear it's Fall. a negative. I don't know. I think you have to... Well, the last time I looked, it was 1% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which no, it went, up. It it went was... 100% to 2%. But that it was, was down a... in the critics' score. So. That was a no, film no, no, development no, no, no. joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if people remember developing film, but I was saying that it was black, but when you shine the light through it, it would be white. <laughs> that was that was the Aww. Cleopatra joke. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, you know, jokes get funnier when you explain them. Yeah, <laughs> we, we see what you did there. See, the, explaining like the joke is the best. Frog. It's like when you keep grabbing as you're falling down the cliff. It's like, yeah, you'll catch one of those cracks. It's, good. <laughs> it's like oh, dissecting it a frog. Nobody cares, and the frog dies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a tragic uh, one though. Like the the actual, sorry, Fringy. Yeah, frog, frog. Yeah. Porn, no, Gorn. Oh, Gorn, what was yeah. the thing? No. Gorn. Um, I mean, it's a Jimmy yeah. Carter. <laughs> anyway, yes. But the, the Cleopatra thing was kind of tragic because, like, the I think the first thing I read about it was the interview with the actress who says, I don't know why everyone is being obviously racist and making this all about her color because this is about who she was as a person and it's about so much more than that. And then you watch, like, two seconds of the first episode and the first line is, Well, my grandmother said, I don't care what they told you at school, Cleopatra was black. And that's the only point of the actual character throughout the rest of it. So, at least sing from the same hymn sheet if you are going to try and defend this absolute train wreck. I think if a well, also, if it's not that um, big of a deal, why change it? Well, yeah. You were the one that thought it was important. That lady back in time, that specific one that said that, took him back in time to show them, do you think she'd be like, you're a fucking liar, wizard? You're <laughs> fucking with me. None of this shit is real. <laughs> this is all, I'm on mushrooms. Fuck you. <laughs> it just drives me crazy because they have to change every, you know, historically white person into a black person. But I'm like, you do realize that, you know, Africans came and in invaded Europe and took over Europe for a pretty long time. Like every famous castle in Portugal was built by the Moors. Mm -hmm. The Moors, oh, they're black. Crazy. If you mm -hmm. actually do a little bit of a history lesson, you can learn all these things. And they could make all of those movies and documentaries about black characters taking over the white people. But None of them have ever opened a history book, so they have no idea. It, yeah. I mean, it shows their own. I think, I, I think for the program, for the the program makers, it was easier to just say like, "Well, Cleopatra is famous and she's well known and she's got mm -hmm. brand recognition, so we'll just take her and we'll just make her black now." That was the thing. Just, Jada even said yeah. other African queens that were black, like so she she knew so like the people. And there's like, no, we're just going to start with Cleopatra. It's like, what? what? No, they did. They didn't know. They had season one which was like some random like tribal queen from from africa but like oh that might be nobody one. nobody had ever heard of her and so nobody watched it and so they, they were clearly thinking what can we do to boost our ratings like well we'll just take over cleopatra because everyone knows her that's going to mm. get us a bit of attention just not quite the attention that we hope for 
I still love that they my are being favorite sued by like, the whole nation of Egypt, which is great. The, the Economist wrote an mm-hmm. article on this, and the, the Economist is famous for sort of moderating every single insane position ever. Um, but the, the article took care to mention that the, sort of the history of Egyptology is rooted in colonialism, and this is bad. Mm. In the course of defending what is effectively African Americans telling Egyptians to go suck it because we're changing your actual history, I think, which of these two things is more uh, colonialist than the other? Because uh, that seems to me, if we are going to stick to the, the old-fashioned term of colonialism, that seems a bit more colonialist culturally than mm. than the old doctrine of Egyptology was, or practice, sorry, of Egyptology was. Um, but, you know, Cleopatra is such a fascinating character. She's arguably responsible for the complete, like, end of the Hellenistic era. So that's Alexander the Great through to Cleopatra is this one sort of revival of Hellenic Greece. Um, and Cleopatra, through her sheer fucking hubris to coin a phrase is the one who gets into bed with mark antony against octavian and as a result of getting into mark, a bed with mark antony against octavian ends up securing the decline of egypt and the last of the sort of the alexander's uh, legacy dynasties and so the end of the entire era she's a fascinating character for every other reason except the one that the documentary seems to think is interesting which is her racial background which is very well established as macedonian uh, with a little bit of sort of seducid persian in it but it's not you seem educated on this when does brendan fraser come in <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Fraser was Soon always after. involved. To be fair, I think it would be a much more interesting documentary if Brendan Fraser was playing Cleopatra. Oh, that would be, <laughs> that would be <laughs> great. In yeah. his whale makeup. <laughs> be aggressive. Uh, and the, the smash final... those, smash those gender boundaries. <laughs> I don't okay. care what they teach you in school. <laughs> The final episode of the uh, of the season, Polly Shore shows up and says, "Hey, I'm Mark Anthony." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh God, bruh! <laughs> uh, boy, what else have I got here? Uh, Joshua Levesque says, "Bless you, drinker, for having Rakia and Gundam on the show again. Bless you too, Mauler, for being so long. And thank oh. you both for so many great episodes. Cheers." Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Josh is one of my mods, so thank you, man. And he's um, he's invited me a couple of times. Scheduling just has not worked out. And it really sucks because I love coming on this show. I get to drink in the middle now. of the day. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't he say we paid him to say it. it sucks. <laughs> Drinking in the middle of the day, honestly, it brightens up your day so much. Your afternoon just passes like like that. It's great. Um, Grimnak says, "Congrats, gents. I've asked Efap this before, but uh, uh, going Star Wars Return of." Sorry, rise of uh, sorry. Are you drunk? It I, might be. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've ju- well, they've just abbreviated everything. So it's uh, Revenge of the Sith. If it's PG, is it allowed one f bomb? Where would you put it? Hail Scott oh. and Pippin. Ooh. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> uh, that was your. I think mine was. I am the fucking Senate. I think that. Was- <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. I think it, over Anakin, I have the fucking high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would just be like when Anakin, when Anakin's burning and when he's on fire and he's like, I hate you. Obi Wan just goes, <laughs> fuck you. Kaylee <laughs> 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 um, Fall says, just for the hell of it, drinker, uh, I triple dare you to watch and review my favorite movie of all time, Pompeii. Also, watch <laughs> Bulletproof Monk. I mean, oh, like, God. why is Pompeii yeah. your favorite movie? What's wrong with I you? you were just laughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Pompeii is an event. <laughs> just like, what a funny time that was. <laughs> <laughs> Pyroclastic flows. It was crazy. Oh, nuts. Uh, also from the same guy, uh, says, for those of you who watched and loved uh, RRR, uh, there's a new Telugu Hindu movie coming out in June uh, called Adrapurush. It's based on the Ramasaya. I know nothing about Hindu mythology, but I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. Fair play. I mean, I yeah. loved, uh, I loved Triple R. So yeah, hopefully this one's equally good. I don't know whether these are foreign names or whether it's just a Scottish man slurring. <laughs> it's a little bit of both, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, Chuxenhausen says, "Hail chat and congrats on 50 open bars and here's to 50 more." Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, cir- cirrhosis of liver says, I'll have a pint of the black stuff, landlord. Also, how are things going with the Jack uh, Ryan, sorry, Jack Ryan Drake movie? Uh, they are going extremely well. Yes. Um, the last week or so has been very busy with uh, 
what can I say? Production meetings behind the scenes, location scouting, casting people. Um, there's an awful lot going on with the uh, with my Ryan Drake movie. I can't say all all about it right now until uh, things are locked in and contractually. But uh, yeah, it's very busy right now because we're planning to shoot in the next couple of months, and so there's a lot that has to happen between now and then. So. Yeah, it turns out that making a movie is quite a busy process. Who knew? What? You know? I thought it was super easy. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> you think of the idea and then it just happens. You know? just, but, uh, there it is. I'm rich. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on, uh, but it's all exciting stuff and it's good to be doing it now. So, uh, yeah, the the process is well and truly underway now. So it's good stuff. Um, J.S. Pena says, Drinker, please do a happy hour for the first three uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies on June the 1st in order to celebrate the anniversary of Johnny winning against Amber. <laughs> I like that idea, actually. Uh, yeah. I'd love to do that. Uh, I'll do a couple more and then finish up. Says uh, LC Le Pen says, Thank you, Open Bar and guests for 50 great episodes. It's helped me to stay sane as the quality of Western media falls faster than Bookie's boxing shorts. <laughs> Aww. 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 yeah they did fall pretty rapidly <laughs> uh, and one more uh, Kevin O'Neill says good times with good people thank you drinker and panel for making tasty spiked lemonade out of all these rotten lemons that are falsely labelled as entertainment uh, I assume he's talking about like uh, like movies and stuff rather than everything the <laughs> everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, I will. I will finish up there because uh, I know we've been going well over three or three hours now. So uh, it's been an awesome stream for everyone that's joined us tonight. Thank you, all the guests. Thank you uh, for all the the people in chat, the super chats, and everything that you sent our way. Uh, you've been super generous as always, and if the whatever we've missed, we will absolutely cover it in a super cat uh, super chat catch up stream. <laughs> Uh, up. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell i've made my way through this quite well <laughs> um, but yeah i just want to say like uh thank you to all our guests for coming in tonight i know like for all the people here and for all the people that have been and gone uh it's been awesome to have all you guys on and we appreciate you giving up some of your time for this so thank you thank you Thank yeah, you. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Legends you. Thanks for it's always me. fucking yeah. fun man always fun. more yeah, yeah. I love you yeah. guys so much. <laughs> it's so good to you guys. I want a hug. Hey, drinking, not bad. We made it a whole year, I guess. That's what that means, yeah. right? Uh, well, we, we can do it. That's a fifty second, surely. Well, well, now it, it was enough. it was a bit. It was it was kind of coming and going for a while, and then like after you know we January, a few weeks, February, so we're, we're over a year, I think. Right? Yeah. Well, after January, February, we we did it every week. And that's when it became like oh, uh, right. a proper yeah, so we're like regular established thing. Yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah, but Drinks season two has to be the breakup arc. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but then we'll season well. three is when you guys get back together and have makeup. Yeah. Yes, that's fine. And better yeah. than ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one happens I have a on video of Laura so. and I just embracing on a beach somewhere. Or <laughs> 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 anyway, well, thank you for all of all of your contributions this evening. And uh, well, I guess that's all that we've got for today. So we're going to go away now. Bye. 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 See you later.